What's up, gays? Jason Cucumber Striker back with another fish tank style video. During season one, I had done pretty extensive coverage, and as we await for season two, and we get the rollout of the edited version of season one, uh, episodes, or at least the time of me recording this, seem to be about 20 to 30 minutes long. So there's a ton of stuff they obviously are leaving out. So I feel like mine are a little more in depth since they're just like a, a little bit longer than the show will be. So uh, what I did is I took all, all the fish tank videos that I made and I, I compiled them together, cut out all the intros and outros basically, and just gave it to you in a, in a condensed form in the definitive edition, the special edition version of what happened in Fish Tank Season 1. Also, consider subscribing to this channel if you want coverage of Fish Tank Season 2, as well as some more Fish Tank videos to tide you over. Day 1. Day one, people were just arriving, so it was actually kind of slow. But around 30 minutes after midnight, which is technically day two, but whatevs, the fish have their first interaction with Sam Hyde, aka Jason Goldstriker. There's everything. Hey, I got my new best. friends. Hi. 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 How's everybody doing? Great. Great. Okay. Reset cameras. Just everybody sit on the couch here. Or Jonathan Goldstriker, that he mistakenly calls himself. I'm Sam. I'm Jonathan Goldstriker. The very first thing he does is honestly completely genius. He starts off immediately by berating and yelling at the fish for not giving him an enthusiastic enough hello for the cameras. This opportunity, it's so whatever you make of it. I don't care, okay? I don't know you. I don't know you because you can sit here and pick your nose, okay? I would recommend, though, that when I say, how are you doing, fish tankers, we get a modicum of enthusiasm, okay? Are you, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. okay. I don't know if you want to be famous. I don't know. I, if, you, if you don't, why are you here? Rhetorical question, don't answer that. So, we're going to redo that. I'm going to redo the entrance, okay? okay. Fish, how are we doing? <laughs> then he resets and says nice things that Chad have been saying about the fish so far. Josie. Hello. Josie. Hey, the, guy, the fellas out there, they're already making gifts of you. <laughs> Waving your head, waving around, bopping around. I think there's a few people on the internet that have a crush on you. Then gives them their first challenge for a thousand real dollars. Who's hungry for rice? The challenge being that there's eight containers of uncooked rice. Each container contains white rice and slightly more brown basmati rice. I have eight containers. Inside these eight containers, eight identical amounts of rice. The white rice is jasmine rice. Jasmine rice is good rice. It will get you money. The slightly less white rice, and this was not intended to be a racial thing, is brown basmati rice. It's just the two rices I had. The white rice is worth money, the brown is not. Again, it is not meant to be racial in any way. And then he just throws each container of rice around the room. And rice pile eight, this one can go Right here. Oh. They then have to sit on the floor and count rice. Who took a light back up by any chance? I can't really tell. What? Who took a light back up? Like I'll the, turn the light back on. The, the white I'll, light. Ask, uh, I'll ask the producer. And this is why what he did was brilliant. He comes in. This is like some some like psyop army shit right here. He comes in, breaks everyone down like a drill sergeant, just berates everyone, breaks everyone's confidence, lets them know who's really in charge in this situation. I mean, they're already on their heels psychologically because they're in an unknown place with unknown people. Like they're already not feeling in control and insecure. Then like a solo detective playing both bad cop and good cop he builds everyone back up with compliments and then gives them this insane task out of nowhere where everyone's like too tired to even like question it i mean they literally sat on the floor and were counting thousands of grains of rice which ultimately meant nothing because he just came back in like an hour later and was like all right I'm, i actually have to go to bed so uh I, what's your best guess is officially over you're gonna have to guess Oh my god! So I gotta go. He also sets up the daily challenge for night two, which is write an essay on essentially why you want to be there and what you're gonna do with the money. Tonight, tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, guys, we're gonna have our first mini challenge. I want essays written from all of you. Day two. 
On day two, TTS becomes available for a little bit as a tester, and they instantly make fun of John. What do you think? Do you don't have time. You don't have time. Violetta, would you hook up with John? <laughs> what the fuck? Sam makes a second appearance, introduces the concept of fish bucks to everyone. Now, I'm going to introduce a new concept here. Fish bucks. This is how you're going to get rich. This is how you're going to start your NFT empire. Each one of these fish bucks represents $500, okay? That's real, no bullshit. That is a contractual promise. That's an actual thing. Sue me if I'm lying. $500. I've got a stack of 200 of these. Anybody good at math? That's $100,000. Yeah. Okay. One plus one equals two. Okay. Thank you. And then forces everyone to stand in the living room and individually read their essays. There's two notable things here. One, Josie actually seems to gain even bigger of a following somehow. So what do I think will happen now? Well, I'm ready to right my wrongs and show everyone what I'm really capable of. No more bitch baby shit. It's time to start taking this shit seriously and go beast mode. And then there was Damiel, who at this point was a heel, but turned babyface after he just gave a really impassioned speech that showed that he could be a true leader. <clears throat> We're expecting fireworks. When I win, which I will, I want to share my winnings with the less fortunate, such as my community in the city of Oakland, South Central LA. Damiel also gets busted smoking weed on day two and almost gets removed from the house. Day three. Day three, TTS continues and things really ramp up. I mean, things, the, the people are just brutal to Sylvia. Get the fuck out of bed, you fat fucking lazy only fans <laughs> Conspiracy theories on Twitter arise as people have noticed Letty kind of laughing to herself under the covers over the first three days in her bedroom. People are speculating that she snuck in a cell phone, which they're not allowed to have. Jason Goldstriker sneaks upstairs undetected and sneaks into Letty's room and jumps on her bed and then in her luggage and then poops in her bathroom. He took a poll on Twitter to see if he should flush or not. The nose won. Also, he finds a psychotic wish list slash goal list in Simon's bed. He might be an MK Ultra victim. He then appears in front of the fish and gives words of encouragement after TTS has relentlessly berated John. So it's not everybody that hates you. There's a handful of people who have a lot of money and are targeting you for some reason. Okay. They have liberal... Wow. We, we looked at their Facebooks, we looked at their Twitters because we have all their information and we saw that they're biased towards liberal. A lot of Biden voters, but my guy... The rest of the internet, look at this. They're making memes about you. He gaslit him into thinking that it was only like a small handful of people that were paying for these messages and that people online have been making based memes about him on Twitter. Back in the day, something came out, so they came in back seat, and then that day. And also that Andrew Tate had mentioned him. And these, of course, are all fake because he asked fans to Photoshop him some fake things to gaslight him with. By the way, Sam Hyde's Twitter handle is at Wigger. Then he also sets up the next challenge. The fish have to break up into two groups of four and then write and perform a comedy sketch. Tomorrow's challenge, comedy sketch writing and performance challenge. Can we get two, who wants to be a team leader? We need two people to be team leaders. <laughs> Sin is absolutely not. Jason Goldstriker also gaslights Jonathan into thinking that he's like this Indonesian martial arts expert and you know gets him to hold pads for him, which is like just an excuse to pummel this poor kid. Hey. Hey. And unbeknownst to him, he's literally just boxing. But around 8 p.m. on day three, the cameras go down. Initially, Sam had tweeted out that he was banned by Google as the show was being run on Google servers. But then it turned out that the server costs were actually way more than he initially expected and his card got declined. Day four. So unfortunately, as of now, there's a temporary stream on YouTube that's live streaming. So you're unable to switch in between the different cameras. Day five. 2 a.m. on day five, Jet arrives with a bottle of whiskey and informs the fish that two of the fish have been given a secret mission. If the other six fish figure out who they are, 
they will be rewarded. And if the two secret missions are completed, then those two spy fish will be rewarded instead. This leads to the house playing detective, accusing and interrogating each other. Later that day, Simons tries to get everyone in a circle and hold each other's wrist to check their pulse as some kind of like lie detector as he tries to interrogate them. And then everyone thinks it's gay and leaves. The person on your left, Pulse, okay? Yeah, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Simons then gets Jonathan alone and tries out his gay pulse technique. They almost kiss. Vance reveals that he's addicted to huffing glue and has been detoxing, but will probably need some soon. Probably about a week now. Yeah, I'm doing okay. Um, but if I start kind of getting antsy, I might not. I don't know if we can accommodate uh, inhalant. The house gets swatted for the first time. I'm somehow shocked it actually took this long. Stream goes down for a couple of hours. The fish are allowed to use their phones to let everyone know that they're okay. After they reconvene, Mr. Goldstriker returns to explain the rules of the spy fish challenge in a little more detail. He's also there to work out. Also, Mr. Goldstriker takes his clothes off and tells the fish to do his laundry for him. Mr. Goldstriker's on the move. Good night. 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 Okay. What do you say about me? Get, get done by uh, noon tomorrow. Simons gets more gay, rehearsing for the comedy skit, and continues to self suck. And Letty dances in Gold Striker's suit. Day six. This is probably the most eventful day in this show's history. It's six day history. Both Letty and Morrow get their room searched for contraband, but unfortunately the sharks aren't able to find anything. I've seen screenshots floating around on Twitter of Morrow, Damiel, Letty, and somebody else I don't remember, all having hidden cell phones, which again is a bannable offense. In the afternoon, Jet drops by to drop off a loot box with some goodies inside, and then Damio attempts to take a poop in it. It's not something I could show you here because he does show his bare ass on camera. And unfortunately, it gets the stream taken down for violating YouTube's TOS, their terms of service. As a punishment, the sharks take Damiel's bed away for the night. After some hours, the stream finally goes back live. Jet returns to inform everyone that after all these delays due to the stream being down multiple times, that the comedy sketches will be performed tonight. He also reveals that both the spy fish won, but he's not revealing who they are. Jason Goldstriker returns for the comedy sketch competition. Now tonight, tonight we have quite an event for you. We have the sketches, the comedy sketches. We're team Letty, I mean Team Vance, they go first and their sketch was, well, it was, it was abhorrent. Not only was it not funny, it was the opposite of comedy. It's Batman to the Joker. Actually, no, it was so powerfully unfunny, it actually started draining humorous energy from everything within a hundred foot radius, like a comedy black hole. It started out fine enough, and then Simmons had a full on psychotic break and went off script and improv for what seemed like 20 minutes, but I guess was closer to like three. The premise was Simmons, I don't know, we got like a vaccine and then became trans for some reason. I honestly, I could not sit still watching this thing. I, I was so, Overload. I was I was Josie being overstimulated, but with cringe. I, I had to like just jump through this thing. I could not sit down. It, here's a challenge. Here's a challenge for you. Try and watch the entire Simmons performance of this sketch. It is humanly impossible. Nobody has done it. I want to meet your best friend, friend President, President Biden, and President Trump, and those who want their rich old people party and do our foreskin ultra meal. Doctor Gilbert. Even Goldstriker completely lost interest halfway through and just laid down on the couch and was not paying attention, possibly sleeping. The other sketch by Team Damiel was Osama Bin Laden if he stole candy or something like that. Honestly, it was a lot of yelling which distorted the camera's microphones. So it was kind of hard to tell what was going on. John was trying to say Oompa Loompa, but with his lisp. Oompa Loompa! John, were you, no John, were you trying to say Oompa Loompa? Yeah. I was, I was laughing pretty significantly at that. The fans would choose the winning team and then the production crew would choose the performance of the night to give them a performance of the night bonus. Gold Striker returns to tell everyone that Team Daniel won by like an 80 to 20 split. So not only are they now safe from the elimination challenge, but they each get one fish buck. The, the uh, people 
have unanimously decided, have decided that Osama, give me the candy, what's it called, give me the candy Osama? Yeah have decided that, that is the winner. Simmons is actually given performance of the night and is forced to go sit in a dark room by himself. And they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come get you later or whatever. It was, I mean, he was literally on the, the edge of sanity at this point. Simmons, you got performance of the night and you have to go to your room now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, just go stay up here. We'll, we'll tell you when you come out. Okay. He needed a timeout. Gold Striker also ups the main prize from 10 to twenty thousand dollars. How much we've made? We've made enough. We've, have we made enough money that I can offer another ten thousand? Should I do that? <laughs> no. Just kidding. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. No. Why? What Too many heathens in this house. Too many heathens? Yeah. I don't mean. Not that much. Is... Whoa, John. I don't know if he sees everybody. Narc attack. <laughs> from the Johnster. Next time we go film so America's good. Next Top Snitch, I know where to find you. All right, we'll up the stakes. Winner of this whole shit show. Gets another 10,000. It was already 10, right? Yeah. So it's 20 now. John and Gold Striker do another sparring session. He nearly kicks his head clean off his body. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just abusing this poor kid. Then after the sparring session is done, Gold Striker continues to gaslight Jonathan by telling him he used to train back in the day punching fridges. What's up, bone? It's like a GE bone shell. Yeah. But I could, I could bust this bad boy up. I could eat you. Yeah, man. You should. Oh, oh, well. up. I gotta bust. bust this bitch up. I'll do that. I'll fix it later. I'll break it more later. We used to train on the cabinets a lot. Yeah. Oh, shit. Whoopsie. We got to bust up a whole room full of cabinets. Oh, shit. Sorry, guys. Sorry. No, Did not know what else was I'll get someone to clean that up. Are you guys playing Twister? We're playing Twister. Oh, yeah. Are you getting the other round? Sorry, guys. I just want to test these doors. This is breaking light. No. Nice. Whoops. Who's that? Where's the ice cream in this freaking joint? Huh? Hey, where's the, hey, where's the big idea? Where's the ice cream in this joint? Huh? Hey, wise guy, what's the big idea? Where's the ice cream in this joint? Hey, wise guy, what's the big idea? Where's the ice cream in this joint? Hey, wise guy, what's the big idea? Where's the ice cream in this joint? Okay, cool. Is that good? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are we going to take? This, honestly, this was like the funniest moment of this entire series up until this point. Like the chaos of all this, I could, I was like in tears watching this live. Letty is upset that she lost, so Gold Striker goes not only to cuck Simmons, but to console her. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty dark, yeah, I would just talk, she's a little sad. How are you doing? Okay. Simmons, you gotta go right here. Okay. Uh, okay. Just go. Okay. Uh, just, just go downstairs, they want you downstairs, go. They got a prize for you. He knocks all the stuff off her desk for no reason. As far as the future and comedy goes, I think, I think you got it made. I think you got what it takes to be a comedian. Really? Yeah. I think you're a winner, and I think you're here to stay. I think you're going to take this competition. You're and I think just that, saying that. No, I'm not. I wouldn't just say I'm Jason Goldstriker. Do you know who I am? No. I would not. Just, I would never just say something. <laughs> like that to somebody. It's not my style. Okay? <laughs> I don't show up in a million dollar foreign car to come through and tell people good job. All right? I come here to tell people the truth. And the truth is, he did a bang up job tonight. And then on his way out, he knocks over a lamp and then can't open the door because he's wearing boxing gloves. I, mean, I need help holding the door because I don't have a, I don't have a lot of gloves on here. Uh, I got it. He then cucks Simon once again. It's not someone in this room. I just what do you mean? Or wait, actually, one thing. Yeah. Here's someone's take a step out real quick. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not someone in this room. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can come back in. And Jonathan. Everybody's weird. Yeah. So just whatever comes out, comes out. And people, 
the thing is, everybody has a, fa- has a fan base. Like, even the fucking retard down there has, like, uh... Oh, never mind. I forget that I said that, but... Day 7. Gold Striker is out. Gold Striker out! Jonathan and Simmons continue their sort of gay relationship. Damiel and Jonathan argue for like a couple hours. He's a lot of retarded person up, and I'm the bad guy. Damiel then full on is just using his phone in like the open. He's posting selfies from the bathroom to his Twitter account. The sharks come in, take all of his stuff, and escort him out of the house. At 5 a.m., a shark comes and pours a glass of apple juice all over Jonathan's stuff. The standing theory online is that this shark is actually Damiel. The chaotic antics of Gold Striker are seeping into the mind of the fish, they dismantle the couch, leaving the house in disarray. The insanity in the house begins to ramp up substantially. Jonathan cosplaying as his new hero, Jason Goldstriker, work out with an obstacle course. A shark steals Damiel's old bed frame. Simmons gets sweaty boxing gloves duct taped to his hands and is placed in a makeshift jail. Oh, stay right there, dude. Letty's bed has been replaced with a much smaller one. Oh, really? Gold Striker gathers the fish and informs them that the elimination challenge will take place whenever the stream goes back live on their website. That does not stand in the way of our upcoming challenge, which is getting very near the website being repaired. He also confirms that Damiel is gone, but does not give a reason as to his departure. Let's have a moment of silence for Damiel, who is no longer with us. Loved by many, and indeed respected even by his foes, Daniel was a worthy competitor here on the fish tank. I think one of the best. As a matter of fact, possibly a shoe in to win the whole shebang. Daniel's not here. Damn! Damn! He then pairs everyone off for the impending elimination challenge. I'm gonna have you all couple up. Into your challenge couples. John and Simmons, you're the first couple. The next couple shall be. Mm, I'm thinking Vance and Letty. Wow. What a time. What kind of sick stuff are we going to be doing? We don't know yet, do we? Well, I'm sure we'll think of something. We always do on the fish tank. Mario and Sylvia. You're my third couple. Yeah, except for Josie. You're on your own. Why don't you step over there? <laughs> the pairs now have to be roommates, so Josie gets the big bed. Tonight, you will be bumping together. You are now roommates. Josie, you're on the roommate. You take the big room. Tonight, I'm sure the house will be a buzz with all types of scheming and mach- machinations. What could it be? What could the challenge be? Have the hosts not thought of it yet? What could it be? We don't know. We do know because we plan everything, but it's possible that we don't know what the challenge is yet. Day 8. New roommates Jonathan and Simmons continue to grow their relationship as they have some late night therapy sessions. Why did you miss me on Friday? Is it because I'm anti tape fat? Or is it because of my autism? Or is it because I'm religious? Which one is it? <laughs> Pick one. Or oh, tell me. If I, if none of them, tell me what it is then. Why do you trick me on I'm, I'm still not talking to you now. Exactly. Because, because you're, you're, you're Because you know I'm right. I think you guys could benefit from just talking for a second without other people listening. You, when, you, when I say you can do what you want, you're going to... And I felt like I did express myself. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I wasn't being whole. Mm-hmm. And I do admit it. And I do apologize to people. For the things I've done. Your talk going good? Going yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Right on, cool. Um, we gotta move it on to like the next topic, you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, you two have been talking in here for like three hours. No, really? Yeah. Josie gets a new plushie and goes gold striker mode on it. 
Jonathan tries to bench his boyfriend Simmons. Now let's move away from the show for a second and over to Twitter. There's been a lot of things happening like around the show on Twitter. If you're following like Jason Goldstriker, uh, Dr. Comfart, Fishtank.live, Samantha Hyde, there's like a ton of people that have been kind of divulging a lot of information about the contestants like in week one when everyone was pointing out that people had cell phones. But here things get a little more sinister. We start to learn some, some backstory as people start deep diving into Simmons' Instagram page. He has some troubling thoughts about children. I'm not going to show the video because a kid is involved, but uh, take a look at these. The video was a kid dancing and then he had these as the hashtags, which was creepy to say the least. He also wrote a book on how to talk to women where he confirms he has a small peepee. -pee. And as Pedogate is emerging for Simmons, Goldstriker is none too impressed. Goldstriker returns to the house with some great news. The website is finally back live. Good news or great news? Who wants to hear the good news? Bye, Bye. Bye. The good news is, thanks to our intuition, brain work, intelligence, gumption, heart, and a whole lot of luck. The website is sort of back up. Sit. He begins the first elimination challenge. The theme of this challenge, Unplanned Parenthood. He begins Elimination Day by having the couples perform a trust fall routine and then forces them to do some soul searching, looking into their partner's eyes and forgiving them for something that bothers them about their partner. Incredible. Vance. What do you see in Letty's? Look at her! Look at her! Look at her! Then comes phase two. They're given eggs, which represent children, an old trope, and then tapes their hands together and then forces them to make dinner. John and Simmons choose to make poor people hot dogs, and John gets a little out of control trying to emulate the insanity of his new sensei, Gold Striker. He stomps on a mustard bottle to garnish his dish. Okay, that's all for Okay. Oh. Uh, Letty then makes a joke alluding to Simmons being a pedo. Gold Striker presses her on this. How would she know that if she didn't have a secret phone? Why are you going to the bathroom with the baby? You should have given the baby to me, Simmons. He's going to do something to it. Oh, no. Simmons, <laughs> take the baby to the bathroom again. <laughs> He's going to drown your baby in the toilet. Fuck. <laughs> He's going to do something worse than that. It's late. It's the Simmons shit. I know everything. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. You have a phone. What? You have a phone. No, I don't. The final phase of challenge day is rolled out. Gold Striker gives out fake babies to each of the couples to replace their eggs. The black one! Black one. John and Simmons. Treasure. Actually, Simmons, I think I think you might be better. Hold on a second. No, no, no. Here is. This Asian, oh, are we on YouTube still? No. No? I think so, are we? Here, Simmons, this one's the way you like it. There you go. John and Simmons, take care of that. Here you go, Simmons. I see you've put a cape. You've done something literally horrifying, even though I set you up to do that. I still cannot believe it. These things are set, these things, hey, Johnny, listening? Hey, say yes, Sensei. Yes, Sensei. These things are 1700 fucking dollars. Do not break this, don't put ma mustard on it, okay? Okay. We gotta return these. Now here's the part that you're not gonna like. Whoever does the worst job is saying goodbye forever! <laughs> goodbye, Simmons! <laughs> Bye-bye! Are we on YouTube? You know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> Can I say it? They were streaming to YouTube. I gotta yeah. say it, man. <laughs> And finally, Solo Josie is given a partner. Now, Josie, come over here, please. Come over here. Do you think you've got what it takes to do it on your own? I think you'll make a great mother one day. But I don't think you're ready to take care of a baby on your own. I think you need a partner. Partner, come on in. Oh, Round of applause for yeah. The return of Damiel. The babies are actually like legitimate training babies, so they they do have like a bunch of like biometric data that, that gets uh, stored in them. So essentially at the end of the challenge, they read the data off the babies and see who had the best performance. The best gets fish bucks, and the worst gets eliminated, Simmons. I do really like all you 
people. It's it's time to start. Uh, it's time to start turning up the heat, right, lady? Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh huh. You know what I'm talking about, Vance? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, Sylvia? You got to talk about tomorrow? You guys seen this? Yeah. Okay. Cause you're gonna. Day nine. Okay, this is where things start to get really crazy. So Letty has this master plan now. And I was thinking maybe, um... Maybe I could take his baby and throw it in the trash. Hide it in the washing machine and put a bunch of clothes on it so they won't hear it when it cries. But before you put it in there, shake it really hard. So Vance follows Letty's orders and hides the baby in the laundry room, but was a little too scared to, to shake it up too bad. So she ends up coming back downstairs and shaking it up herself. Oh, Letty, if you only knew the things you would cause from this one moment. All day on Twitter, more and more info about Simmons is leaking online. He has written many books that are all for sale on Amazon. You could still purchase them now as far as me recording this. And one of these books that's one of the main points of contention is this book he has on how to be a good camp counselor. And the book includes advice on how to properly engage in a relationship with a camper, aka a child. The internet sleuths start doing their thing and find out like he was a camp counselor for like eight to 15 year old. TTS gets re-enabled and like 90% of the messages are about Simmons being a confirmed pedo at this point. I give Simmons three years before he is found across the border with an eight year old. Just relentless. The confirmed pedo and terrified Simmons burrows himself and his fake baby in the bathroom and then instructs his half-wit henchman John to go around the house and shake Shake everyone else's babies. Did you take your baby? Yeah. Morrow totally Bear's blood starts to boil at this act of terrorism committed on his fake cub. Simmons, come out. I'm gonna do the same shit to you guys. You guys fucking grab this shit. I'm gonna do it sooner or later. So fucking come out. Jet, a leader in the habitat, pulls Simmons from his cave and staves off the mostly verbal lashings from the mama and papa bears. Hey, look, why would he fucking have that? Bear? Easy, easy, easy. Papa Bear then confronts the halfwit who clearly realizes he's in over his head but lacks the social intelligence which leads him to stand his ground from the grizzled housemate. What are you gonna do? Oh, I'm, I'm not even here, obviously, because yeah. I'm gonna fucking get yeah. As the verbal lashing continues, a peacocking Damiel presents his drip in an ill timed mating dance. I'm gonna fuck your shit that bad. I mean, I will. I will. I will. I want to see Then the off duty leader of the jungle, the awe inspiring lion, Jason Goldstriker arrives to try and quell the community of critters with some acapella karaoke. I know you love me, <laughs> you love me He then follows up with some light reading. I just keep excerpts. I keep excerpts of books that I like on my phone. I'm not a freak, All right? I mean, here's I put this is something I saved as an inspiring quote. There was a counselor who worked for a camp decades. For decades, everybody loves him, but he got fired because he offered drinks to underage girls and allegedly raped her. Here's how to do it the right way. And I don't know what is the right way. What's the how, how does that where does that go? You don't know either. Uh, it was a while ago. Yeah. Probably a hacker. Sexual harassment warning. Like every culture, there are customs when you hit on boys and girls. So does camp counselors who work at camp nowadays are mostly college kids from all over the world. Of course, they would expect a romantic experience. You got to do it the right way or you might get fired. What's that referring to? What does that mean? That struck my curiosity. That piqued so, my interest. It made me wonder. Questions cropped up in my mind. What could this be referring to? Those quotes are from Simmons' recently discovered literature. What's this picture of this, like, 11-year-old? Uh, it says, into long legs. That made me go, Bruh. I'm like, what the fuck's in arms? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. For counselors, be nice, be polite, be the big brother of everybody else. Be a bit naughty. This is actually like hell. 
<laughs> Simmons is officially the first to be eliminated from the tank in quite possibly the worst way humanly conceived. Well, Simmons, allow me to say something that you'll understand in your language. Okay. Translation, I'm kicking you off the show. Effective immediately, we'll be walking you out, taking you to a bus station in Fall River, and saying goodbye. You have one and a half minutes to get your shit. Thank you. Go ahead. Can I sing a send off song? Yes, please do. You can put the baby down also, Simmons. <laughs> Go back. That one? Oh, he's still here. Dude, you gotta get your shit. For real. I'm getting my shit. He follows Simmons up to his room to expedite the process and gives some final parting words of career encouragement. Sorry I have to do that to you. It's a tough break there. Jeez, please. I guess the career in entertainment is going to have to be rebooted elsewhere. Maybe as a VTuber. Make some bucks. You know? Maybe make a few bucks on YouTube. That's an idea. Do some League of Legends. Do a few VTubes. You know, you're going to the top. As a matter of fact, I think you're going to the top. I'm just going to say it. You got a twinkle in your eye. I know you're going places. You're going to the top. Oh. Big time. As in celebrity much? Hollywood? USA? Status? <laughs> A-list? We're going to forever to get the bus. We're going on a bus trip to nowhere. We're not going anywhere in particular. We're just going to forever. Just gonna get this door warmed up for him. Oh yeah. Get those hinges heated up. Get those hinges ready. Boom. Open. Close. Open. Close. Eviction status. Incomplete. Eviction. In progress. Door. Closing. Opening. Practice. Could have crossed the meal on my goodbye. Make sure he makes it to the nearest bus stop. Shut the fuck up. Good lord. After Simmons is jettisoned, Goldstriker punishes Letty for her psychopathic antics that caused this whole mess. Vance and Letty, you are in an ocean of trouble. From now on, this baby will be raised by Vance. Why? Because you initiated the Shaking the Baby Challenge. Additionally, as further punishment for Vance's role, we will be forcing the two of you into romantic situations so that Vance's girlfriend back home gets pissed off. John is unable to handle the immense stress of losing his only friend in the house to the insatiable bodies of teenage summer camp attendees and barricades himself in the bathroom. Letty tries to talk to him, as well as Goldstriker, to no response. Goldstriker returns to deliver a pep talk, which Morrow hilariously got in the middle of unintentionally. John, how you doing in there, buddy? Because I'm about to give you a, a motivational speech through the door. If you don't open that thing, I'm just going to start talking. This is the biggest battle of our professional lives, okay? It all comes down to this. Now, we either heal as a fish tank, or we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, Simmons by Simmons. Any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die who's going to get that inch. Sorry, Mark. Jeez. You go ahead. And I know if I'm going to have any light. Jet comes to the rescue and manages to talk John into coming out and cooling off off camera. For like five minutes, I'll let you relax. I'm not even joking. It was so intense up until this point. I don't know if like this edited down version of it is really going to do it justice. I honestly thought that John with his lack of response in the bathroom had like self-harmed or something. There's a very real possibility that Jonathan might end up going home after this. He, he just broke down. Like he could not handle 
the, the intensity and the insanity that ensued. Jet does the rounds, checking in on everyone, and Letty, again in true psychopath fashion, shows her lack of empathy by pretty much immediately asking if she's actually not allowed to touch the baby, just making the whole thing about her. If it's just that he's upset, then yeah, we're gonna talk to him. Okay. He's fine. Okay, I wanted to ask, um, am I really not allowed to take care of a baby at all? What does that mean? And Mauro also requests a timeout as he's now second guessing whether or not he'd like to continue in this hell house. Oh, I was wondering if I could take an hour to like just alone. Absolutely. And can I talk to my family just because I'm not sure if I want to stay here still? Yes, because that's fair. And that's where things leave off. Simmons is out. Morrow and John have been pulled from the house temporarily, at least off camera in the basement or something. As of me recording this, most of the cameras have been taken offline. The reason why I left was because I just didn't feel comfortable being there after what happened. I Day 10. After the insanity of the night prior with Simmons being ejected from the house in the most humiliating way possible, Mara leaving of his own volition, and John having an emotional breakdown, Jet and the production crew decided to give them the night off and turn the cameras off for the night, give them some booze, pizza, and some much needed privacy. But the morning did tell quite the tale. Apparently John got way too drunk and was annoying once again. He threw up multiple times beside his bed, which is now in the laundry room for some reason. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the past, but uh, John did mention on like day four or something like that, that uh, he doesn't drink water. He only drinks coffee and energy drinks. Yes, so up until this point, the past nine days, he has exclusively been drinking coffee and energy drinks because water has like fluoride in it, I don't know. Jet tries everything he can to rehydrate John. Bottled water, sparkling water, Gatorade. John refused them all. I know you're... <clears throat> I know you're feeling sick right now and you're try just trying to recover. You know, when I'm when I'm feeling low, sometimes I need inspiration. Talk about a crazy coincidence. This is Andrew Tate today, uh, claiming it's hard to breathe and he has swelling all over his body. He also states that he's not allergic to anything. And he's only drinking water and coffee today. Water and coffee, man. Gold Striker returns. I brought you fluoride filtered water. You have to drink that. Okay, I will. There's, that has been, there's no fluoride in that, okay? For another mini challenge. Can't wait. We're doing a mini challenge today. Today's mini challenge is called The Cell. Is there a better name? Also known as, what is my other name for this mini challenge? Also known as Getting Cozy. Ooh, <laughs> I bet we're going to have a good time. The Cell Challenge, or is... In retrospect, I would like to call it the incel challenge. I think that's a pretty fitting title. A simple challenge. Everyone needs to stay in bedroom two as long as they can. The last one to leave gets three fish bucks. Gold Striker pretty quickly rips the bed and starts sparring with John, making the place an extra stinky bad no-no time. <laughs> Actually, hell. While the fish are in bedroom two, the production crew just tear up the house. TTS gets re-enabled, which begins like this meta for TTS moving forward that I, I mean, I think the joke probably will run dry at some point, but as it was happening on this day, in case if you missed it, this was hilarious. The way this thing evolved, or I guess devolved. It started off with people targeting out John with encouraging messages after the emotional distress he had just endured. <laughs> Guys, please spin the bottle. Also, we love you, John. Then they began adding more Johns to the sentence. All right. John, John, Johnny boy, John or Johnny John. John the great John traversal John tent. Then it devolved into just the word John and the letter J. John N O J John N O J John John J J J J J J J J J J J J J J and finally at the lowest possible form just a bunch of J's. I am your mom. I am your dad. I love you, John J J J J J J J J A B C D E F G H I J J J J J J J J J J I just sold my house so that I could J J J J J J J J J. 
Literally, though, John J. 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 Keep it up, Top J. Love from Australia. Just kidding, John. I am not really from Australia. J. 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 This went on for an extremely long period of time. Uh, they made so much money off this like time frame of people doing TTS. It was actually like insane. I saw someone on Reddit post this, so I don't know how true it is. Every 15 seconds, there was a new text-to-speech message. TTS is about $100, I do believe, and at the time they were at the standard price like it wasn't a discount or anything so uh, they were making like four hundred dollars a minute damiel ends up leaving the room first and then finally we get our first glimpse at the entity unfortunately like the shock master in wcw his debut is completely overshadowed by something going through a wall what the fuck is making that noise John also accidentally gives himself a concussion. John ends up getting ejected from the room because of his actions. Day 11. By the morning, four sharks still remained in the cell. Sylvia needs to take a dump, so she leaves, which leads to big brain Jonathan yelling Bible verses through the karaoke machine. With the torture proving too much for the fish, Vance makes his biggest play possible offering to split the winnings with the other two fish if they leave first. Vance is the prison cell challenge champion. Fish toys have been activated and I honestly can't believe just how many of these had been sold. These things are not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. I think Josie got like six new plushies and I think there's 6,400 tokens. And 6,400 tokens will run you 500 American dollars. This is goblin insanity. Goblin insanity. Then Gold Striker in a new suit, which is an ode to John wearing nothing but suspenders on the upper half of his body. You look like a strapping young lad. Yes, I do. I see you went shirtless today as well. Uh-huh. Excellent. He introduces the next miniature challenge. John, we're doing the drinking water challenge. It's not actually a challenge. You just have to hydrate. Just drink a cup of this. I have non-fluoridated water coming here right now. Okay. And then another mini challenge. Well, regardless, we're playing hide and seek. I'll be the first seeker. A good old fashioned game of hide and seek. While everyone is hiding, he proceeds to completely redestroy the house with a weed whacker. <laughs> Eventually, the high IQ'd fish realized the whole ordeal had been a troll and hide and seek wasn't actually being played. They were just hiding for no reason. And the final thing of the day, they were given another mini challenge, a Nerf gun civil war challenge, men versus women. And Josie herself comes out on top by shooting Damiel in the head to win the battle royale. Oh, fuck! Yeah! <laughs> Day 12. A fairly casual day until Goldstriker comes over for dinner. Goldstriker ends up bumping the grand prize from 20,000 now up to 30,000. The TTS J meta is still going, by the way. We're bumping the prize up 25,000. Should we say 30 yet? Jason in a self defense situation. J J J J J J J J J J J J J The baby challenge is officially complete. Damiel and Josie won and each get one fish buck. Mostly because John's baby was legally dead. Letty and Vance almost caused World War III in the house by starting a secret baby shaking challenge. And Sylvia on multiple occasions slept through her baby crying. Also, you two are responsible for the crime wave of endangering and shaking babies, which is the most demented thing I've seen in a reality show. Whose idea was that? Was that yours? No. Was it hers? Can you lift your glasses up and close your head and your eyes for a second? That was demented. Don't shake babies, okay? Whether they're dolls or not. Vance is also ordered to pay child support for almost destroying a child from the black community. Vance, you were told to take care of that black baby. Here's the deal. You have to be punished. The next fish buck you earn, Vance, 
That's going to be child support paid to Letty. So you're down a fish buck right now, my friend. You need to step it up. You need to take start take, when I give you black babies to take care of. Actually, you know what? I'm not giving it to Letty because I don't like her. The next fish buck you earn, I'm going to be giving that to a black woman of my choice. Sounds good. Outside the house. Okay. That's on my own time. And then Gold Striker sets up our next challenge. He has a bunch of his friends coming over to the tank, a bunch of esteemed guests. We have some very hungry visitors coming by tonight. It could be a pack of wild animals. Could be a whole football team of black guys. Could be crooked cops ready to beat everybody's head in. We don't know, but they're hungry, okay? Could be a bunch of stinking refugees from the border. Could be a bunch of homeless guys down from Kennedy Plaza. So they need to cook hundreds of hot dogs in 15 minutes. This is going to be such an epic night! Wieners! Yeah, wieners! Wieners! Power food! Oh! Ultimate power! We got some hungry, hungry guests coming. It is a secret, top secret surprise, but we need all these wieners cooked within the next 15 minutes. Fish, get to work. So it turns out the guests never actually showed up. Who could have guessed that? And then the hot dog cooking challenge then turns into a hot dog eating challenge. Let me see what the status is on our hungry animals. Damn! Darn it! Ah! Snakies! Jeez! Turns out those hungry animals are nowhere to be found. What do you think about that? Shit! Damn! What are we gonna do? God! We have all these hot dogs. I guess we'll just have to eat them. The winner gets four fish bucks, which is quite a bit of money. That's crazy, because it's like a mini challenge, and the baby challenge was for one, so... High stakes. On top of that, they also have a business retention challenge, I guess you could call it. Here's like what I mean by think about what could be relevant about asset and debts as you're listing them out and you're typing them out on your Excel sheet. And after the hot dog eating challenge, each fish is going to have a sit down one on one with the business guru to see who retained the most info for one fish buck. So dumb. <laughs> like while they're eating all these stupid hot dogs, they also have to like listen to crappy crypto advice. Oh, this is such a dumb show. Letty wins the challenge by eating 12 hot dogs. She may have cheated, so Jet just spreads the winnings amongst Vance, Josie, Damio, and Letty since they were all pretty close. And he also announces that our first real elimination challenge will happen the following Friday. Day 13. Another pretty lackluster day in the tank. A new ability was added for the viewers. You can now pay to have a sound effect play somewhere in the house. These sound effects include fart zone, eating ASMR, eating ASMR 2, angry Asian man, audience laughing, audience cheering, doom, mariachi band, hysterical breakup and massacre. Letty and John seem to be getting much closer in the house, but I suspect it's because Letty realizes that nobody else in the house really likes her at this point, and John is like the weakest link, so she's kind of just digging her hooks into him. There have been numerous convos about how no one really likes Letty because she's a snake and a liar and lazy and never cleans, etc. What are your thoughts on her? Like, do you trust her? Like, what do you think? Oh, she tried to go back on her deal. Yeah. Shit. Isn't that kind of weird? I, and, and whose idea was to check the baby? It was a horse. It was his. At some point, the fish are given walkie-talkies. I think on the other end, it's Nick Rocheford, but it's unconfirmed, so don't quote me on that. Either way, the person on the other end of the walkie-talkie has just been like talking shit to the fish, trying to antagonize them. The white shark at one point locks Letty, Josie, and Damiel in a room together. As I mentioned, the person at the other end of the walkie-talkie is antagonizing Damiel, getting them all riled up to the point where he starts to lose it, specifically targeting his anger towards Letty. Dude, you're so fucking annoying. Shut up! Shut up! And that's really it for day 13. Not much happened on this day. Also, I think the only day that doesn't have an appearance from Gold Striker. Day 14.
Someone spilled a drink in Letty's room and she accuses Damiel and Vance of the transgression. Letty really won't let it go, which pisses off Damiel who gets revenge by dumping a can of chili all over her bed. Then the fish are given copies of Simmons' collection of literature. John has shell-shocked Vietnam flashbacks of his almost gay relationship with a potential pedo, triggering his PTSD and going into a schism ripping up the books. <laughs> Gold Striker arrives and smashes the cabinets for no reason. He then berates the fish for not being entertaining enough up until now. So as punishment, he wants to teach them a lesson in humility and to be grateful and thankful. And thus we introduce the handicap challenge. This will be our first actual elimination challenge. Each fish gets some sort of disability, or in some cases, a secondary disability. It's the wheelchair challenge. You're gonna be thankful at the end of this because you're gonna know exactly what it's like to have gratitude. And whoever doesn't pretend to have the disability the most will be sent home. This will be tracked on an infraction system. Infractions will be tracked by fans and manually reviewed by the production crew. Whoever has the most amount of infractions by the end of the challenge will be eliminated. The disabilities were assigned as follows. Wheelchair bound, schizophrenic, amputee, deaf, blind, fucked up. I'm not even joking, that's what the disability is called. He just has a bunch of disabilities. He has like a neck brace and, and crutches. John. You were in, you were officially fucked up. You were in a vicious car accident. Here are your crutches. Wait, there's chili on them still. They will be allowed to use guerrilla style tactics this time around. This time around, you are welcome to, we are engaging dirty tricks mode. And the last component of this challenge is that there are t-shirts on sale for each of the fish. Whoever sells the most merch, the most t-shirts in this time period will be immune from elimination, which is like a genius play on Jason Goldstriker's part, just a way to sell merch and get like the people in the house to essentially advertise the merch for him. Oh, by the way, I'm so pissed off that none of you are being interesting. I'm gonna go get a fucking homeless black guy to come in here and be your new roommate. I'm serious, you're gonna be rooming with a homeless black guy soon. And that is punishment for not being entertaining. That about covers it. We're gonna get the homeless black guy? Uh, yeah, we are, I have, to rent a, I have to rent a car, rent a car and drive around and find one. That'd be badass. I'm actually looking forward to that. Party find an aggressive one. Um. <laughs> Letty instantly goes into panic mode, shilling herself out to sell t-shirts to her fans. She reveals her feet on camera, which was like a huge request by a lot of people in chat since day one. She eats the chili off her bed under the promise that someone will buy her shirt. Yum. Yummy chili. Is that what you want? Did you get what you wanted, you sick freak? Josie removes the eyes from one of her plushies so they can be blind with her. Okay, I think twist was the move. And Vance might be up for some kind of like Emmy for best actor because his psycho ramblings are so real and spot on. Like it almost seems like he had uh, like, you know, like method, done some method acting training for this role in the past, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Vance, that lamp-shaped person to your left wants to kill you. TTS has been playing the part of the voices in Vance's head and are trying to convince him that the key to his psychosis and figuring it out is inside one of Josie's plushies. So Josie is now on Schizo Watch. Day 15. Continuing on our handicap challenge, Jet swings by to switch up the disabilities for each one of the fish, which is fair enough because I'm pretty sure Vance would have be actually become a schizo if he had continued under these conditions. Josie now has Tourette's, Vance has a wheelchair, John is schizo, Damiel's 
full on retard. Letty's fucked up, and Sylvia is an amputee. Daniel, you have the first of the new batch of mental disabilities. Daniel, you are now retarded. <laughs> You're a too good at that, Daniel. Daniel, it, we're gonna do lithium and tranquilizers. You gotta <laughs> just just for sixty seconds. Sorry. Then Gold Striker makes an appearance for our new mini daily challenge, and this is hide and seek part D. Hey, guess what? Look, I think that we have a lot of fun if we played hide and seek right now. I was in the neighborhood, an unscheduled visit, I just thought I'd drop by. I was driving my million dollar foreign car when I thought to myself, hey, now would be a good time for a little hide and seek. And it just so happens I was right by the stop on the highway. So here we are. Guys, let's go ahead and go hide. And trust me, you're not going to want me to find you. Where's the plastic solar in this joint? I think there's a drawer over here. Whoops. Where? The drawer by the bridge. Where's the silverware in this crazy joint? Hey! Where's my birthday cake? Where's the birthday cake in this joint? What kind of place is this cake that the birthday cake? Hey! You're going to go to the birthday cake, Doc! Will Gold Striker actually seek out the fish that are hiding? What kind of hellish twist does he have planned for this seemingly innocuous game? Find out all that and more, uh, right now, I, I guess. All right, I'm coming to find you! Hey, come on over here, Warren. All right, so here's the deal. For every person you find, I'm gonna give you another 20 bucks, okay? You hungry? Mama. You don't want some pizza or something? No. Let's go hog wild. They're all upstairs. So the twist on this one was, remember yesterday when he was like, oh yeah, I'm going to get a homeless black guy in the house. Well, he actually did it. Oh, by the way, I'm so pissed off that none of you are being interesting. I'm going to go get a fucking homeless black guy to come in here and be your new roommate. <laughs> So stupid. Gold Striker brought in a homeless black guy to play hide and seek with the fish. <laughs> like I thought this was a joke at first. Gold Striker was leaving. He's like, oh, so by the way, this is also your new housemate. Oh my God, I can't believe this. Gold Striker then reappears for another challenge. For the next hour and a half, on top of everyone's disabilities, they also have to be retarded because this is the retard challenge. And for Damiel, that's double duty, so he has to go retard mode times two. For the next hour, triple threat challenge, in addition to being handicapped, you are also retarded. Begin. Begin being retarded. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, the fish seem kind of exhausted by the past couple days. Many of them aren't participating in the retard challenge, and a lot of them are like barely participating in the disability challenge at this point. I mean, John, for instance, is nowhere to be found during the retard challenge, possibly because this is like his version of blackface. Either way, it was all for nothing as Jet comes up like half an hour later and he's like, oh yeah, this uh, just kind of sucks, so never mind. The prize was supposed to be a fish book, nobody got anything. Early, early morning, day 15, or perhaps it was late night day 14 uh there seems to be like kind of a rift in the house beginning to build between like i guess team letty and team damiel damiel and vance clearly have an alliance josie's in the alliance too but she doesn't really seem like she's picking sides like she's just kind of nonchalant john desperately wants an in with the cool kids but most people up until this point were kind of fed up with john in the house except for letty you can make the argument that perhaps letty is just trying to dig her succubus hooks into him because she can manipulate him and honestly nobody else in the house that really likes her sylvia was part of that cool kid click but there was an argument like i said early day 15 late day 14 um between letty and john john was talking about how he has now made up with damiel and they're friends again and now he's kind of been accepted into the cool click and then letty He's like upset by this. Whether or not she's actually looking out for John's best interest, it's hard to say. She starts crying, John consoles her, the chat kind of just, everyone on the internet just kind of figures she's just trying to like <laughs> dig deeper into Jonathan, but Jonathan kind of like had rejected her to be part of the cool club. And then we add like another layer to this uh, background narrative on day 15 where Letty and Sylvia 
are together alone in bedroom one. And it seems like Sylvia has kind of switched sides and is now team Letty. And they're talking about how Vance is kind of two-faced, which he is. I mean, he is very, uh, he's playing this like a game. Like he is very devious about everything. Like he lies to people's faces, pretending to be their friends, like especially with Letty, let's say, when realistically he hates her. And they both kind of express how it seems like John is being torn away from their side of this new civil war that's broken out in the house. How are you like gonna forget how we treated you? Yeah, exactly. And it's not even just because it's not like your like like friendship. Like it doesn't game. respect him still. Like he's still like it's clear that he's just using him. Day sixteen. The producers have a word with John about his lack of effort the day prior on the handicap challenge, which is now currently putting him in last place and potentially having him be eliminated. It's pretty clear that John feels kind of dejected at this point, that this carefully curated hell has taken its toll on his soul. But he did say he'd bring his A game for the new disability challenge today. Jed arrives to tell the fish that it's nice out, so it's going to be an easy day and that the crew are having a barbecue outside so the house can relax. Gold striker arrives a little later and gives a brief update on the t-shirt sales and then needs to go poop and doesn't return for hours. I cannot believe I fell for this. I mean, this is such an obvious gaslighting attack from the producers of this show. This is nothing more than the calm before the storm, the eye of the hurricane, a moment so momentous that it will forever shake the very foundation of the fish tank. Hours later, Gold Striker makes his second appearance to set up a new challenge. He announces that Camino's dad had come to learn that they were violating a fire code. There's only allowed a maximum of five contestants in the house at any given time. Okay, on a sad note, bad things happening, stuff that you're not gonna like. Camino's, or who I should say, whose father's back role in this project, has gotten a little bit wary of the fire code violation. This house, there's too many people in this house. Josie, the fire code says we can have up to five contestants in here. Josie tries to count. There's probably more than five. Six. Bingo. How are we gonna rectify that? What's gonna happen? Someone's gotta go. Yeah, I think so. I think someone's got to go. Mm -hmm. Big time! Tonight much? Kicking someone out? New development? The only obvious answer is a new sudden death disability challenge. We are going into 4X damage mode. He gives everyone new disabilities with tasks to go along with them. Letty is schizo and needs to decorate the house. Vance is retarded and needs to play tag with Josie. Josie is amputated and needs to not play tag with Vance. Damiel gets a speech impediment and has to rant about his favorite person. Sylvia has Tourette's and has to find a quiet room and tell a tragic life story about her. It was my old heroin dealer because he shot a cop then it died. He shot two cops. So. Is that real? Yeah, David Ware. And John has Down syndrome and needs to find a hidden phone somewhere in the house. The house is in complete chaos. Damiel is doing a John impression. Sylvia is telling a real story about her ex heroin dealer. Letty is spreading chili on the cabinets. Vance and Josie are running around like children. And John is playing the part to a T. And Gold Striker is just throwing things around and yelling on a megaphone. All right, gang. That was amazing. That was probably the best. 20 minutes of television that's ever been filmed. Mm -hmm. I can't believe what we just witnessed. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a show. As a matter of fact, I'd be surprised if our viewership wasn't at an all-time high right now. As a matter of fact, we're getting calls from major networks to buy the show. I can't believe it. My cell phone's blowing up. My agent's been calling, ringing off the hook. Get these retards on my show! Give me the retards, baby! Then comes our final challenge, the flash round, everyone has the same disability for one minute intervals challenge. Phase one, retards. Everybody's retarded, begin! <laughs> Phase two, no legs. Phase three, Tourette's. <laughs> Phase four, blind. Phase five, grand final, death. Oh, 
Gold Striker and the crew leave to tally the infractions and deliberate the fish that will be ejected. In the downtime, the fish discuss the day. John is sure that with all the infractions he racked up in the few days prior, he's being sent home and confirms that he found the whole handicap challenge offensive and it really took a toll on his spirit, which is fair. Gold Striker returns, he breaks character and shows his appreciation for the fish. All the fish. But it wasn't good enough to make up for your performance over the past couple of days, John. I'm sorry to say. So we have to let you go. That's okay. I have to say something. You never backed down on your morals while you were here. You won over a lot of people. This is not bullshit, by the way. This is Zach. I'm dropping the character. You won over a lot of people, man. You did really good. You're headstrong. You're confident. And everybody watching this right now knows that you've got a bright future ahead of you. John is ejected out of the tank in the exact opposite way of Simmons. It brought a tear to my eye. John had a heart of gold and brought some of the most memorable moments to the show. His sermons, the wall, the mustard. Okay, that's all for I could go on. His reaction to Simmons getting eliminated. Because I'm about to give you a, a motivational speech through the door. John played a huge role in the dynamic of the house, the forever optimist, the glue holding everyone together. And even though he had these loud, unfettered, wild outbursts that were not intentional, like not like done intentionally to try and cause more chaos in the house, it's ultimately what it did do. And it, for the viewer, it was amazing. John was a great character and an even better person and will be missed by all. And right before John leaves, Vance pulls him aside and tries to preempt all the bad things he said about him behind his back by telling him he was just playing the game and he is sorry and feels bad and does actually care for him. Later that night, Vance, Sylvia, and Letty are having a post-mortem where Vance hints that John had been talking smack behind Letty's back, saying her getting close to him was weirding him out. But Letty mentions she has things she could say to refute this, but won't out of respect for their dearly departed John. Day 17. Day 17, another eventful day from week three. We get a brand new camera angle in the house only for season pass holders. This is the bathroom cam, which, okay, well, hold on. Let's, it's not, it's not what you think it is. Calm down, Letty Cells. Everyone's aware that the camera is in the bathroom. It's only in the downstairs bathroom. So that bathroom is kind of like off limits as an actual bathroom. And the idea behind it is we're going to use this room as a uh, confessional booth moving forward. Josie uses it to act weird, which I made into a music video. If you want to check out the full music video, link in description. We can't do that. We can't do that. Vance and Letty are talking in bedroom four where Naked Snake, aka Big Boss, reveals to Letty all the things John had said about her behind her back. Letty defends herself by saying things she couldn't say the night prior. That it was John who actually initiated playing footsies. He also offered her to sleep on the couch with him. And when she pulled back, that's when he started giving her the cold shoulder. I know Letty's a villain here, but honestly, I think I've got a side with her on this one. It seems what she's saying is true. John did do all those things. Now it is possible Letty knows that and it was using those things to her advantage to strengthen the bond with John so she has like a partner in the house. That is also very possible. Jed arrives to drop a series of mini challenges in what is known as the Summer Camp 2023 Challenge. No relation to Simmons. These are team building exercises that will also allow the audience to get a better perception of who the fish actually are. The first challenge is the impersonation challenge. Everyone is given another fish that they have to mimic. It's not like they were just given one. It was like they were given one and then they did a second wave where everyone got a new one. So I'm not going to go through who everyone was, but here's a couple clips. Try and guess in the comments who was who. Here it is. Can you make it for me? You let it fall. What's that? So making it unfrozen. You know when you like fuck a bitch and she's getting her period and gets all over the place? Yeah, I think I like did something like that for my OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> 
Needless to say, every single one of the five remaining fish crushed it in this challenge. Next was the personal low challenge where the fish had to talk about the lowest point in their life or one of the lowest points in their life. Sylvia went up and told a very real story about her ex fiance, which would kind of lead to their eventual breakup. And then this happened. I was like, no, I gotta go home. Like my mental state isn't good. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry that happens. That's fucked the worst time. Yeah. Oh, Jet forgot to turn off the sound effects. Letty would go last and tell a completely heartbreaking domestic abuse story, and then this happened. I'll just talk about a different little point. I'm sure we are one of those. Anh hai vụ đó là thằng thất dạy đó. Đó chỉ lo là chữ chữ thầy. Thằng vô nhân quá. Con cá tôi cộng cản. Này nở cũng chưa đầu lắm mày. Ha. Bây giờ tao không muốn nói chuyện chuyện nhiều. Thằng hai vụ hai vụ nó im thì im. And then this happened. The contrast between how serious this is. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Can we turn those off for just a second? And then this happened. But um, the place where I was, like, it was a really small town. So I didn't have anywhere to go and I didn't know anyone there. <laughs> Fish would get some grass in the house to fit the motif. Gold Striker arrives around 10 p.m. Gold Striker mentions that we have now entered Act Two. We've made it to the end of Act One. That's a big achievement. I can't believe we got this far. Can't believe it. This is momentous. Wow! I'm surprised the fish made it this far. He teases scat time. Scat poopy. Yeah, it happens. And it's about to happen in this fish tank. Oh, you know what I'm saying? You're about to scat it up. Come up. When Jet and I and the rest of the writing staff were coming up with ideas, I'll be honest with you. About 30% of them involved scat feces or poop and shit. I'm excited to say that we're going to make at least half of those ideas come true. This is the first. What do you guys think about taking a break against Mayor? Seems like it might be a trick. It's not. Would you would you guys want to get some get some air and like just go outside, be in the woods, get some sun? I'm excited for you because this 48 hour flash challenge we're calling it Happy Camper. Dun, dun, dun. Happy Camper. That's right. We're going in the woods. I can't. This is awesome. This is actually awesome. Oh. We're gonna be campfires. We're gonna be horror stories. We're gonna be making s'mores. <laughs> We're gonna be telling ghost stories, baby. We're gonna be big ass bonfire. Everybody's gonna relax, recharge. It's gonna be so much fun. What? Something's bad. No. Something bad's gonna happen. No. Nothing good happens in this house. No, 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 no. The best part is, we don't even have to leave the fish tank. <laughs> We're gonna do it right here in the woods. That's right, the kitchen and the living room. This is the woods right here. Whoa, the geyser's about to erupt. Look at the geyser. I think there's an eagle over there. Look at the eagle up there. Oh, there's bears. Don't leave your food out. Bears are gonna get you. This is epic. This is awesome. The rules are simple. They cannot leave the downstairs area. They must sleep in sleeping bags and tents. No lights, no bathrooms. There is a porta potty added. Whoever pretends to be outside the best gets three fish bucks. And whoever has the most infraction loses a fish buck for each infraction. Ironically, they do the outside camping challenge after John was kicked off the show. And Simmons. And trust me, at midnight tonight, we're gonna turn this whole building into the biggest freak show on planet Earth. It's gonna be the most fucked up, insane shit you've ever seen. 
You're not going to like what walks through that door. <laughs> day 18. All day, Gold Striker had been hyping up that we were going to get a big surprise at midnight. And at 12.20 on day 18, we get the introduction of Simon. Who's that creepy guy coming in? What? Simon? Nice to meet y'all. Hello. No, not Simmons, but Simon. Yes, that was done on purpose. Just like Simmons, Simon is an Asian weirdo and also has a lisp like John. I uh, came with some drinks. I got housewarming type of thing. Through some internet sleuthing, I managed to reveal his true identity. And by internet sleuthing, I mean uh, I was in a Twitter space and someone put it in chat. His real name is Tai Nguyen Nguyen. Tai Nguyen. He's a Vietnamese-born, now Texas native, stand-up comedian. He's made at least one appearance on Kill Tony before. His performance was okay. Hey, what's up, my accountant? You want to hit the strip club and make it rain on them hoes proportionally? Girl, I'll do your taxes for some nap dance. Kill Tony, if you've never seen it as a podcast, I'd highly recommend it. But Simon isn't actually one of the fish. He's what you'd call a freeloader. He cannot win the grand prize or be eliminated, but can compete for fish bucks. After some much needed rest, the fish get some added stipulations to the Happy Camper Challenge. Letty gets nominated Park Ranger. Jet reduces the total amount of supplies, and now Letty is in control and has to ration them out. But not just food and water everything. She's essentially anointed dictatorship status in the house now. Anything anyone does, if they have to go to the bathroom, like basically anything, all has to be run by Letty. Her rule of the park is, well, not a very confidence inspiring one. For instance, she created a point system where essentially you'd be awarded uh, a point if you did something that she liked and if you did anything to like slider, she would deduct a point from you. Damiel pretty quickly decides that he's not going to listen to her at all. Points mean nothing. Yeah, they do. No, they don't. They literally mean nothing. Well, they do if, Shut you, up. if you want to eat. I don't care. We get a late night rap battle. It was, yeah, it was okay. It's off. The access is blocked off. You poop in a porta potty. <laughs> so do you. No, I don't. I drive to McDonald's because I can leave the fucking house. <laughs> the fish get pretty drunk and TTS is super mean to Sylvia. <laughs> Which leads to Letty and Sylvia having this big blow up fight. I don't like you either, so why are you trying to appeal to them? I don't give a fuck, dude. You're pandering so fucking hard to them. You do! You were driving your pussy yesterday, bro! No, I wasn't. What the fuck are you talking about? Dude, we all seen it. Go ahead, go off, bro. Letty goes to bed, presumably, and the other fish get way more drunk and Damiel goes off talking shit, well, in general, but also specifically about Letty for like four hours straight. You over here talking shit about me. You didn't think I was gonna fucking notice? I'm so fucking aggravated about that shit. He also mentions numerous times how much he needs coke right now. I was asking Day 19. The fish are woken to a new freeloader, Lance. Lance has been posting on Twitter saying how he's Vance's duplicate, so the producers actually brought him on the show. About time we got some cool people in this house. Yeah. About time you got me in this house. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Gold Striker arrives and is unimpressed with the performance of the Happy Camper Challenge. There's been so many infractions that he's like, we're just going to extend it by another two days and we'll keep extending it if you guys don't start playing the game. And he also nominates Sylvia, co-park ranger. Gold Striker pulls Lance and Letty aside and gives them a secret mission to get Vance kicked out of the house. All right. Um, so we're just telling Lance that we are trying to get Vance out of here. Kind of becoming a problem. Um, Why? In all seriousness, because of some stuff that's been going on off the show. It's caused uh, problems. I was thinking about something else and maybe start laughing. It's caused a bunch of problems. What are you thinking about? Killing you? <laughs> <laughs> Listen. But are you being for real? Okay, that here's. I'll, I'll tell you the real thing. The version, the version of the contract that he signed, is uh, the one that predates the finalized version, 
it says in that that the prize is a hundred thousand because we thought we were going to be able to initially oh. offer a hundred thousand. We'll give you but five. We'll give you five thousand bucks. I, I don't know. You're a, you. That's what you do. You're good at that. You just figure it out. That night we get more drunk as tensions continue to rise as we inch closer to a full-on civil war. She didn't know how to fucking sweet. I'm just like I looked at her when she was sweet, and I was like, God, I don't want to fucking like that. Day 20. Jet makes Damio park ranger for the day, with the added stipulation that if you get shot via the water gun, you can get dethroned. Josie pretty quickly assassinates Damio and becomes the new park ranger. Jet pulls the freeloaders aside and gives them a special top secret mission. He tells them to steal and throw all the fish's personal belongings in the basement in exchange for alcohol. They throw a ton of stuff out, including one of Josie's plushies and, most importantly, Damiel's shoe. Letty, feeling ostracized from the rest of the fish, defects from the group and starts a coalition with the freeloaders. After the success of Operation Sabotage, the newly formed Letty Coalition carry out Operation Supply Run. She uses Damiel's lack of knowledge of her defection to her advantage. She manages to steal and hoard most of the food and beverage supplies. Civil war is now broken out in the tank. Damiel goes full American Psycho. He is convinced that it was Letty who threw his shoe in the basement. Letty is scared for her life and barricades herself in bedroom four. I'm for real not playing. I'm three minutes, Letty, to figure out where my shit is. You better talk to the lands. I'm not playing. I'm not, I'm for real not playing. All your shit is downstairs, right in front of the porta potty. You think I'm fucking playing with you, Letty? Well, you better talk to him and tell him where my shit at. In retaliation, Damiel throws Letty's personal belongings in the porta potty. Keep playing with me that funny shit, bro. The United Dane Sphere Alliance hold a conference to discuss what had just transpired. Letty confronts Damiel to tell her side of the story and to try and negotiate a peace treaty. The United Dane Sphere Alliance reject the offer. I'm not playing with you, bro, and I'm really gonna tell you off. Like, you dead ass have been talking so much shit since day one. I don't even fucking know you. I don't even look in your fucking direction. Until you start saying hella shit to me, I hear that shit from everybody. Okay, you- No, don't okay me. Let me talk. Let me talk. What are you talking about? Okay, you, 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 say, you probably you didn't deserve it, but like, you gotta understand who you are as a person. You're literally crazy. You're a psycho. I'm not the one who is yelling like that. Okay, so I, I, I have every right to be mad. Like, are you serious? Yeah, but at me, I didn't do anything. But at me, you see what you just said? But at me? Like, what is what's that word, bro? Like, like, sure, you have every right to be mad, but control your anger. But I... Like, you know that I'm not going to... I literally control you. my anger. So, I literally so, control so my anger. So you think it's okay to, like, intimidate me and shit while I'm in there? That's the shit I be talking about. Like, I'll never touch you. Okay, well, I don't know that. I know, you're I know that. You're yelling at me and you're acting un unpredictable. How am I supposed to know what you're going to do? And you don't act unpredictable? When I've seen people project anger like that, yeah, they tend to get violent. All right, because you're just used to that shit. And your dumbass was crying about, oh, yeah, he got really drunk and he was, he was hitting me. He was hitting me. Shut the fuck up. Like, you really off fucking marbles thinking that I'm going to really hit you. You're fucking retarded. The battle at Kitchen Isle breaks out between Lance and Vance. Get out of here, Lance! They're gonna you on! They're gonna you on! Come on! After having some time to reflect, Damiel apologizes to Letty for throwing all of her stuff in the porta potty and making fun of her for being a domestic abuse victim. I'm gonna, I'm gonna a lot of emotions really get the best of me today, and uh, I usually do, like I usually don't act like that, and like that violent remark and bringing up. Damiel is an emotional individual that lost control of his anger on multiple occasions. You see, Damiel had missed the birth of his first child. He had been born earlier that day. So he had already been dealing with quite a bit of turmoil on day 20. Not unlike John or Morrow, it all just proved to be a little too overwhelming. And as he says his goodbyes, Damiel leaves the fish tank this time for good. Day 21. At almost 1 a.m., after the immense stress that came with the close of the Civil War arc, the fish and the freeloaders are introduced to the newest addition to the tank, Chip. 
if you so choose, you know, it is midnight, but hey, money talks, bullshit walks, chip, is that, what's in the bag? Can I just, can I just, please just let me know. A seemingly homeless alcoholic has been introduced as sort of a mentor figure for their next challenge, the drunken piece of shit challenge. The rules are probably the simplest they've ever been. Get as drunk as you possibly can and be the biggest mess you possibly can. Also, create the biggest mess you possibly can because they remove the garbage cans. Josie steps up and wins the challenge. She assassinates Letty, invites Chip into her bedroom. <laughs> allegedly burns her hair on the stove trying to light a cigarette, though I've been having a lot of trouble trying to find the actual footage of this, but a lot of people were talking about it online and it does get referenced the next morning. Chip dips out before they wake up the next day. The house is in complete chaos. It literally looks like a third world country or any progressive metropolis in the US. With Damiel gone, the summer camp challenge is finally over. They clean up and bring the house back to a state of normalcy. And then the fish are introduced to their newest freeloader, Air Soft Fatty. Chris, come on in. Hello, everybody. Hey. Hey. Which in a vacuum is a great choice. If you don't know who Airsoft Fatty is, he's a like a YouTuber content creator type guy. Anger is not the way of the jet. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Ow, I hope you got oh, are you good, bro? But if you know anything about the Sam Hyde, like iDubs beef, then you know that there's some like undertones to Airsoft Fatty being a selection here. Their first task is to paint a portrait of Fatty. Josie gets an intervention for being an alcoholic the night prior. That's defensive. That's defensive. That's it's not relevant. Place. Place. Jesse, were you under the effect of alcohol when you were torturing people when you were putting blankets over their heads and handcuffing them? No, I don't think I was. You don't think? I mean, I'm here for a reason. I guess I'm an alcoholic. You know. Do you even know when you're drinking? Um, I forget. It's just all the time. There's a debate challenge and then a roast battle challenge. The latter wasn't for everyone though, just for Letty, Fatty, and Simon. But before the challenge began, Gold Striker gaslit Simon into being more racist in the roast. Yeah, hey, stand, stand on the bed here. Let me, let me get you higher up here. My advice to you, just mm -hmm. taking the temperature of what people are saying, yeah. looking at, I think they found your social media, so people are kind of aware of what your act is like, and mm -hmm. they're saying things, you know, you got to kind of lay in on the, just hit him with a little bit of racism. Which he does. Josie drink alcohol, not because of ancestral drama, but to forget the fact she's Filipino with anorexia. It was that racism we wanted. Natty went to a tarot card reading to find out she has stank pussy energy. Dumb bitch, yeah! Sylvia, you look like Courtney Love if she grew up in a trailer park and liked taking black dick. Over the line much? Oh, Larry, you look like the definition of every vegan. Underweight and eating a ton of meat in your life. Ooh, that's disgusting! And of course, this whole thing was just another gaslighting campaign by Gold Striker, as you could see here. He posted this on his Twitter account. And for the final big moment of the day, we get the original four fish getting chained together at the ankle in the uh, human centipede challenge. It's actually, they never even explained if this was a challenge or not. It was just, they, they did it and kind of just left without actually saying anything. So they're just chained together. No one really knows for how long or for why. Day 22. So many little things happened in day 22. It was a, a gaslight maxing extravaganza. The producers are really just pitting everyone against each other today. We start off the day by promoting Lance. He gets an offer to be on MDE season two, which is currently being filmed. The, de the, the dedication to a role, like getting the same clothes as Vance, was like crazy. Like going to a going to TJ Maxx and getting all that. Have you heard of uh, Have you heard of World Peace? Uh, well, it, it doesn't matter. You. You're gonna like it. It's a sketch comedy show. Um, not that big of a deal. It's, it doesn't, I'll, I'll try to sell you on it later. We'll figure it out. You're gonna like it though. If you're unaware of MDE uh, or Million Dollar Extreme, it's probably, in my opinion, um, the funniest sketch comedy show ever created. It came like right after uh, the Tim and Eric show ended on Adult Swim. It was run by Sam Hyde and a couple other guys, Nick Rocheford and uh, Chris, I don't remember his last name. <laughs> but in classic Sam Hyde fashion, the show got canceled after the first season for 
uh, being racist. Cool ass sweatpants from Bucci. Yo, Bucci makes the finest sweatpants that you can buy in the mall. That you can buy in a black person mall. Adult Swim took it down. It doesn't exist anywhere. So you can't actually like watch it legally anywhere. But if you go to archive.org, I'll leave a link in the description. You could check out the entire first season there. I'd highly recommend checking it out. It's six episodes. I think they're like 15 minutes each. It's really like an easy watch. The brunt of the gas attacks are centered around Simmon. If you remember on day 21, Gold Striker told Simmon before the uh, roast battle that he needs to be a little more racist. My advice to you, you gotta kind of lay in on the, just hit him with a little bit of racism. Which he did, and then he put up this tweet right here. Please send some realistic tweets of Simmons being canceled for racism slash misogyny and blog articles and stuff. Gotta be realistic, gonna try and convince him tomorrow that he got canceled for the roast. And that's exactly what he did. Fans flooded Twitter and Reddit with different fake news articles and posts, people, you know, pretending to be people in the Austin comedy scene talking about it. Gold Striker pulls Simon aside and lets him know that he's currently being canceled and that he's pretty much ruined his career as a stand-up. Guess my career is over. No, 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 no. This is, this will, yeah, I guarantee you this will blow over. I don't know. Simon then reveals his cancellation to the rest of the fish and he is quite upset. The opposite of what I thought that it would do for my career. So now I have to go back and make a public he proceeds to get drunk, smoke cigarettes, and contemplates leaving the show while in bedroom four. My parents died when I was 15. It was really hard on me. You were a homo. I'm happy your parents died. I'm happy your parents died, so now I have to embrace a crack ass cracker like you. Letty tries to negotiate with Gold Striker for her pooped covered items. Thank you to Daniel. You think me and Jet are going to split this list less than half, and he's going to find Twilight hardcover by Stephanie Meyer. That's what was, that's what Daniel fucked up. You guys had to make a list of all the stuff that was destroyed, and that's what I did, and I did it very thoroughly. Do you expect us to believe Daniel threw this much shit in the porta potty? He did, because they're all small things. Uh huh. Which, what, uh, what of these items did you fish out? Um, I took out the, but like the things that I took out, we threw out because. Um, they had yeah. poof on them. Mm -hmm. So you, you use tongs and gloves to pull out the one fluffy, super fluffy pink scrunchie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, would you, what were you going to do with it? No, I wasn't going to use it again. Okay. You thought I was going to use it again? Silly me. Can you just read the list here? Oh, yeah. I can read it. Um, soft face towel. and Glossier highlighter. Okay. That's all like really small stuff. Like they're like this big. It's it's so small it would be hard to calculate the value of it. No, it wasn't. Okay. He might as well be Gold Striker Steen the way he aggressively counter offers. I'm thinking $200. No, it was more than $200. How are you going to get more than $200 out of me? Uh, that stuff was cost like way more than $200. A lot of things cost a lot of money. Well, you guys said you would replace the stuff. I think that that's a fantasy. And that might have been said by somebody to sort of quiet you, but it's not, that's not really going to happen. How about $225 and a Little Caesars pizza? It was like at least $500. I'm thinking more like 250 No, it was at least $500. If you came down closer to 250 where would we be? Like if you had to, if you had to split the difference and nudge down a little bit closer to like 185 well, like, what number would you spit out? I think the value of the stuff was probably like closer to like six hundred dollars, but I'll go for five hundred dollars. Two seventy five? No. Okay. Well, we'll table this for now. We'll call, we'll circle back to it later. No. Oh, you could. No. I actually have to go. I have a call. Chris gives a self defense class. No, the girls need coming like this. I've got like this. If he tries to live this way, I'm walking with it. And we get a brand new freeloader. Welcome, Ella, AKA White Josie. New freeloader. 
the old Lance tactic at it again. Ellis seems to be watching the show as she's familiar with all the characters and kind of what's happened up until this point. Also, I think at some point she mentioned she's a fan of MDE, so she integrated pretty quickly. Then to further gaslight Simon out of the tank, Jet announces a new challenge, the talking shit challenge. Everyone except Chris is paired into teams of two, Letty and Ella, Vance and Josie, and Sylvia, and the begrudged Simon, who does not want to compete and just wants to leave the tank to try and salvage his dying comedy career. Each group goes into a bedroom and has to gossip and talk shit about the others in the house, and the winning team gets three fish bucks each. Chris has an advisory role where he has to go room to room to help people out with their jokes, and like Agent Orange being sprayed on rural Vietnamese people, not Simon, this is an analogy. Jet goes around to each group and tells them to like downplay things as soon as Chris gets in the room, so not to reveal too much, just to give him some light jabs to play with, to keep him happy, to make him feel included. But then the producers go to Chris to go into each room and then gossip to the people in that room about all the things being gossiped about them from the other rooms. She is digging every corner. She can't. Here she is. What is she saying? Uh, I can't really repeat all of it and saying so many different things and it's hard to follow. Really? Is she just having like a schizo <laughs> moment? So we essentially have Chris playing this role of like just going into the rooms and like wrapping up everyone's emotion. Also, we get to see Letty's panties. <laughs> I wasn't gonna show you, you pervs. Jet returns to crown the winner of the challenge. He strategically downplays just how vicious everybody was to each other. Letty ends up winning the challenge, but in the post-challenge hangout after Jet leaves, TTS essentially reveals a lot of what people were saying about each other. I would assume this was all done by design. And the Frank Hassel meter has reached 99%. It's almost time to activate. Are you ready? Day 23. Ella is trying to quit vaping, so Jet takes everyone's nicotine in solidarity. Let's take away all your vapes and all your cigarettes and let's do this together. Let's support Ella with this. The gaslighting attacks continue with the target du jour being Ella, who the producers keep calling Ellie. It starts with Jet pulling Letty aside and telling her to try and get Ellie to admit that she's been copying Josie's swag with the stimming and such. Yeah, that's not well, what the show's about. Why would she want to come on the show? Clout. Because she wants to be Josie. She wants to fucking wear Josie's skin. She wants to scalp Josie and put her skin on and be a fucking murderer or something. I don't know. I don't trust her. And you come in like this? She's going to make a Josie suit. It's why I didn't think about She's already started with the fucking clothes. She's wearing her same clothes. Right? Then we move into our next challenge, the presidential race challenge. Essentially, the gang are divided into two groups, right and left, conservative and lib, fish and freeloader. And just like a real presidential race, they have to hold a primary to elect who's gonna run on behalf of their party. It's Vance V. Simmons. And then we have the presidential debate to decide who will become the president of the tank. As president, they will have the power to enact new laws. These laws will be used to govern the fish and create a sort of justice system to make sure that these laws are then enforced. Simmons wins in a big confidence boost. Looks like he's staying in the tank. He had nominated Josie as his sheriff, the one responsible for policing the laws set in place. But Gold Striker and Jet reveal that they have their own choice. The newest freeloader, Frank freaking Hassel. We want to make one small annulment. Now that we have a new friend here, Frank is going to be your sheriff. Your laws, Frank, is responsible for enforcing. I'm excited to work with you. Me too. It's going to be awesome. You may have noticed since week one up in the right corner on fishtank.live, there's been a meter. That meter has been going up, the Frank Hassel meter. You can make donations to make the meter go up, and the meter, as of today, has been at 100%, meaning that Frank Hassel made his way to the tank. Hassel, if you're unfamiliar, is a now canceled YouTuber who did like man on the street prank type things. Generally, I'm not a fan of that type of content because I just kind of find it, uh, well, A, a lot of it's fake and B, I, I find like it's just a lot of it's like kind of just douchey. Like it's just mean and not really all that entertaining. But Frank Hassel is so mean and his style is so absurd that I just can't help but laugh at it. I'm Dr. Don Wario. Huh? You're a sissy feminist gay guy. You yeah. suck dick. Yeah. You're a fucking asshole. I have emergency women's clothes for you to wear if you need them. Why are you calling 911? You're gay. You're a gay man. 
You might know him from the Boogie 2988 situation, another YouTuber that he had been harassing online for years. Eventually he showed up at his front door, which is crazy and illegal. And Boogie ended up like coming to the door with a gun, a loaded gun and shooting at him. This, this video he put out on his own YouTube of Boogie 2988 approaching him with the gun is what got him canceled. So I don't know how much I can show, but I'll try and show a little clip here. Yeah, on three, pull the trigger. Okay, is this what I have to do? Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. <laughs> <laughs> you fat fucking <laughs> Oh my god. Is this real? Yes. Is this guy gonna kill me? Yes, this, he's here to look at the air conditioner, Sam. Is this what I have to You're do? You're a fucking f In about 30 seconds, I'm gonna fire a warning shot. <laughs> fire it now. Okay. Fire the warning shot now. The looks on Gold Striker's face illustrates the chaos waiting for the unbeknowing fish. Gold Striker gaslights Josie about Ella, I mean Ellie, about stealing her swag. She's making it so that you're less interested in comparison to Letty and Vance. He then talks to Ellie, I mean Ella, about chat noticing the similarities between the two and for her to play it up because the fans have been enjoying like these two different versions of Josie. Her heavily is going to really endear the I got to do more of this. Yes. <laughs> you could even like magnify, like if she does it a little bit, you do it a lot, you know, that sort of thing. Okay. But mess with it, because people, people really love it. Masterminding much? Then he gaslights Sylvia about Ellie, I mean Ella, stealing Josie's swag. He listens, everybody, other people are doing bits, like Simon's probably doing some fucking, everybody's got some stupid thing. It's funny though, everybody else is doing funny, that fucking shit pisses me off because it's like she's trying to come in here, like whatever, I don't know, I don't care, I mean I do care, but it just fucking just creep, creeps me out, it's kind of gross, but whatever, okay. Frank starts out playing things pretty light, which leads to him accidentally stumbling across a broken Chris who's been dealing with some pretty serious stuff outside of the show in his personal life and had a bit of an emotional break. He ends up sitting with him and giving him like this heart to heart moment, trying to like build him back up. It's it's Frank trying to console the Airsoft Fatty. There have been trolls who have literally told these guys like, dude, we're going too fucking far. Yeah, well they know they're going too far. They want they, what they want from you is they want you to react. A sentence I never in a thousand years thought I would say. He also breaks Sylvia's vape, enforcing the no nicotine policy, and then immediately sparks up a cigarette. Mm -hmm. No nicotine. I know there's a cigarette bomb. Yeah. Day 24. In the early AM of day 24, Hassel begins to activate, and his target, Sylvia. In the nearly three hour harassment event, first, he sprays her with the water gun. Uh, Sorry about that. Uh, I honestly don't give a fuck. You can keep going, bro. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah, I'm gonna then he steals her bed. She tries to get him off and fails miserably. I was just trying to go to bed. And she's in here like, and he took my bed. Sexual tensions between the two build pretty quickly. Sylvia gets blackout drunk and goes off yelling and complaining about hassle for hours. He then pours water all over her mattress. I don't like that. <laughs> I miss the fucking bed. You go away. I'm into that, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Eventually, she makes her way downstairs to complain more. Frank won't let her back upstairs and get sexually assaulted, furthering the sexual tension arc. I'm being touched. I'm being touched. She's touching me. Why is she touching She just keeps touching me with her hands and her legs. Rub up against me. Everyone is exhausted with Sylvia's self-imposed mental breakdown challenge, particularly Chris. They go back and forth for about 30 minutes in a yelling match. Dude, you're bullshit! I wasn't I fucking fucking fuck. you and not everything's about you, bro. Sylvia goes back upstairs and Chris has another mental breakdown. I hate posters. I hate People who pull the shit she's done tonight. Sylvia plays Fall Guys to get Letty jealous. Frank sprays all of Sylvia's clothes with fart spray and steals her blankets and pillows. Sylvia is now alone and reaching her mental breakdown final form, starting to get into it with the producer who was trying to give her a new bed so she could sleep it off. Why are you laughing? What's your name, Tax? Why are you fucking laughing, Tax? Think I'm playing wife out of this bitch? She's too drunk to function, so they take her bed back. You're gonna take the bed back? 
Yeah, someone just paid to take this shit. In the afternoon, Simon gets inaugurated as president and reads out his constitution. He enacts five laws. Number one, everyone needs to watch Chris do stand-up for 10 minutes a day and they need to laugh. Like they're not allowed to fake it or else he'll keep going. Number two, no socks or shoes. Josie wears extra big pants to hide her feet. Number three, no makeup for the ladies. Number four, everyone needs to work out with Chris for one hour every day. And number five, no nicotine. The rules do not apply to the freeloaders as per Simon. Ellie, I mean Ella, abruptly leaves without saying anything. She really didn't add anything, so I don't think anyone cares. Letty gets a new bed and is given a mission to carry it upstairs solo and almost kills Goldstriker in the process. Whoa! <laughs> Shit, fuck! You okay? God damn it! What are you doing? I'm trying to lose the Fuck you, what are you fucking doing? Fucking asshole. Chris leads the first workout. After the blow up from the night prior, Chris has lost all respect for Sylvia and the entire hour is basically a device to shame her personally. She refuses to participate. What? One lap? Can you go change? No. He had to show me he wanted the effort to be able to change. I'm not going to give you any special treatment. Then one of my favorite moments in fish tank history, Gold Striker and Chris are having a boxing session in room three, and there's a hangout session in room two. Chris has a third emotional breakdown in front of Gold Striker, and while they're having a heart to heart trying to mend the situation, Dude, I'm really homeless and you're supposed to be helping with these things. I'm fucking dead! Frank Hassel is trying to name all the racial slurs in room two. Slant? What is that even? It's like a it's like a Simon type guy. Spade? Have you said Spade before? Jungle Monkey? Jigaboo? Knuckle Dragger? Yeah. Damn, how many slurs do you know, Fred? They must have given him some coke. The unintentional comedic timing of this is, in my opinion, what makes Fish Tank the greatest show on TV or the internet. Day 25. New fish toys get added to the tank, including emptying the garbage can and screaming at Letty. Ah, ah, cut, cut, cut. Frank reaching peak hassle mode unbeknowingly kicks off the water sports challenge by pissing on Vance's bed. This prompts Letty to join the challenge by dumping a cup of piss on Vance's bed as well. Frank at this point is over the challenge and decides to start a new challenge, one that will change the dynamic of the tank forever. The taking a shit challenge. He poops inside of a solo cup and leaves it in Letty's room, which is also his room because he's sleeping there too. We get the first real challenge of the day, the Hassle Frank Challenge, where everyone gets to hassle Frank for a change. Letty wins by scooping up some sort of biological substance Frank had left on the dresser into a cup and made him drink it without telling him what it is. <laughs> Whose spit was that? That wasn't spit. What was it? You left that in our room. I don't know what it was. Oh. <laughs> Get him water. I think it may have been cum. Letty, now playing the role of Hassel's sidekick, dumps out the cup full of poo near Sylvia's luggage. Once Sylvia finds it, this throws the house into complete chaos. Dropping the funniness for a moment. Like, all serious, did you really think shit in her closet? No. It's out there right now. You can fucking go look. You found it? You saw it? Um, yeah. On the floor there. It's I mean, really funny, but I mean, it wasn't me. I'm gonna be honest. So funny, but... Even I, that, I think that that's like a biological hazard. I don't, I don't think that's like a... The next two hours are some of the most gripping, real and absurd moments in television history. Nobody wants to confess to the crime and Jet claims someone had paid for the fish toy to bring the cams down in that bedroom while this was all taking place. So he can't figure out who actually did it. Someone donated to take the camera in that room down. So I was just trying to look through the archive this is more gaslighting. He knows exactly who it is. So Jet and his appointed deputy, Josie, begin interrogating the tank one by one to try and get to the bottom of the case. And you came in the bedroom three. What did you find in there? In the fourth bedroom? Or the bedroom four, Glenn. You were in there. You and Vance were in there in bedroom four. And you said, Vance, you're acting suspicious. He walks into the bathroom looking left, right. Yeah. says, don't worry about it. Don't worry about she it. Was... Just passing through. Yeah, you so come out. You go into bedroom three and then... What'd you find in bedroom three, Letty? The mood lighting of the interrogation room and, and Jet's 
the improv skills in this situation. I think Judd should win like a Golden Globe for best supporting actor. I mean, the situation itself was very funny and absurd and, and silly, but everyone was playing the roles like of being interrogated or Jet playing the role of interrogator very like serious. Like the things they were saying were funny, but it was never like a wink, wink, nudge, nudge kind of funny. It was just all played in earnestness. Again, another reason why I love this show because like this is something that no one ever really could have saw coming. Like I, I don't think this is something the producers had planned for. Like this wasn't one of their challenges, but this is a moment that happened on the show organically that everyone took advantage of and made it into something much bigger than it already was. A moment that couldn't really happen in any other medium. Eventually, Jet manages to narrow it down to Letty as the prime suspect. She gets interrogated further now with her lawyer Chris at her side. How often do you dig for scat? What? How often do you dig for scat? Dig for scat. Dig for, dig for gold. Dig for scat. Dig for shit. What do you mean? Dig for shit. Just give them the audience, audience answer, Lenny. You'll be okay. How often do but you dig for shit? But what do you mean dig for it? Dig for it. Rummage. Dig for gold. Dig like for gold. Like skin. I believe butt. they're no, asking no, how but, often do you toilet. take a shit? Why are you avoiding the question? But I don't understand the question. Dig, dig with your fingers in a butt or a toilet for a boof. I don't do that. <laughs> They have a trial for Letty, who at this point hasn't snitched on Frank yet, even though she was offered immunity. What was going on the night of the poop? Uh, from from multiple accounts, there seemed to be some discord going on. Uh, mm -hmm. Letty, it's not. It's, there's another version of the word discord. It doesn't mean discord literally. Just talking. Yeah. I know that. After the trial, the jury go to deliberate, but can't reach a unanimous verdict. So they deliberate a second time. With this time, everybody voting for Letty except for Chris. However. Have you seen it? Have you seen the poop? Yes, I've seen the poop. How have you seen her when shit? When she's shitting the cup, right? How have uh, you seen her shit, Chris? How do you know what her shit looks like, rabbit poops? Tell us how you know what her poop looks like. Because she's told me about it. Now look. Wow. You guys doing this? You guys doing this? That's insane. She's talked about her no, poops. That's she, oh, are you let serious? Us, let me, let me she's talked about her poops with you? What she said. Which leaves the decision once again not unanimous, so Jet gets bored and calls the whole thing off. Letty, raise your hand if you think Letty is guilty. Still inconclusive. It's fucking. All right, all right, we're done playing cop. If you guys don't want to come to a verdict, we'll just take the shit and we'll just throw it outside. Oh yeah, also Chip had returned, so he was the other prime suspect, but couldn't stand trial because he overdosed in the bathroom. By this point, everyone's quite drunk because they've been day drinking at President Simon's orders since this will be his last day in the fish tank. He's going home the next morning. He had been mentioning this for like days at this point. I don't, I don't know why he was still there. Day 26. Chris has another mental breakdown after Frank drinks one of his beverages. <laughs> He is having like two mental breakdowns a day. They need to just pull this guy off the show. He's clearly not mentally stable as a human. Frank terrorizes the house a little more before going to bed, throwing a dresser at Sylvia and finding contraband. People online speculated that it was a weed vape that he found, but... Uh, on Twitter, I think it was, Jet mentioned that it wasn't actually a weed vape and it was much worse. My assumption is a vibrator. The next morning, Lance makes a comeback. Chris gets put into blackface. No! Also, this creates one of my favorite fish tank memes. Lance does battle with Frank and the house is destroyed once again. As Simon finally says his goodbye, he's awarded $50,000 for quote, breaking the fish tank, something he had been citing for days as to the reason why he's leaving the fish tank because he feels like as president, he did such a good job that like everyone stopped following the rules. So he just like broke the fish tank. In reality, what actually happened is that the bit ran dry and the rule, like Frank stopped enforcing the rules and Simon wasn't gonna do anything about it. So yeah, just no one really cared anymore. So even though Simon is clearly full of shit, the producers take advantage and further gaslight the fish tank. They announce that the game is over and that they've run out of money, that the 50K they gave to Simon was pretty much all they had left right now. But they're getting acquired by a new broadcaster who will be funding the rest of the project. Like I said, Simon cleaned out basically all the money we've made with the grand prize of 50K for breaking the fish tank. Uh, and that 
basically made it to where the 35,000 we promised was a little in jeopardy. But I got a phone call and it seems for right now we're being reacquired by another network, okay? And we're in the process of a bank wire that's going through to give us some operating funds. And there will need to be some changes. As per the new parent company, Biological Warfare is a huge no-no, so Frank gets kicked off the show. I mean, it wasn't me who shit on the floor. You said I could do it. Yeah, I thought it was funny. You gave me, you gave me <laughs> authorization I, I, to do it. No, Frank, it was you told funny. me that I could do it. It was funny. It was funny. He goes on a rampage and tears up the house in anger before he leaves. Letty is crying and packing her suitcase, seemingly done with the show. Gold Striker talks her off the ledge. Letty Cells rejoice. Day 27. They get drunk once again, and Letty finds out that Sylvia threw out a bunch of her clothes for pooping in her closet. They get into a fight. What do you mean? You put my clothes in the trash, self-admittedly. You said that you put my clothes in the trash. I was trying to clean, They were in the drawer with all my other stuff, like shampoo and conditioner. No, that was all over the floor. A shampoo, conditioner, you body wash, my, my toothbrush, everything. You don't know what you've started. Hey, yep. Letty steals Sylvia's clothes and pretends to pee on them. They fight some more. You said you'd knock me out if I didn't make things. You can roll your eyes as much as you want, but I'm not gonna fucking see you because I know you like that shit too much. I don't really the game. You're ready to fucking leave earlier, bro. Just get the fuck out of here. False promises. Yeah, you too. You said you're gonna leave earlier. You're not fucking out of this house. All you know is how to cook spaghetti. Chris lets off an airsoft fatty. Jet gives Sylvia and Josie a secret mission. Duct tape a Down Syndrome filter meme someone made of Letty on Twitter around the house without her knowing. Pictures. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. Let's put, let's put these all over what the house. What is that? I don't know. What the fuck? Anyway, what I wanted to ask Chat was... Honestly, what is this? Is that you? I don't know what you're saying! It looks like you. I don't know what you're saying. Wait, wait, wait. I think we put, put a picture of me in like a Down Syndrome simulator. <laughs> <laughs> there was also a Mother's Day challenge, obviously, because it was Mother's Day. Uh, that involved like a lot of improv. Honestly, it was not that funny and skippable. I think um, with the lack of Frank or uh, Sam or Jason Goldstriker, sorry, or even Jet kind of leading the pack for this one, it kind of just fell short. Day 28. As I mentioned, the tone of the tank seems to have changed quite drastically since Frank's departure. Everything is much calmer. Jet arrives and tells everyone that there is a special celebrity guest coming to the tank the next day so they all need to clean. And then later in the day we get the introduction of our new challenge. And this time it's another elimination challenge unless the another fish breaks and leaves prematurely once again. We begin the gang war challenge. Jet's abonics is hilarious. Lady Moon's the first time you ever cap somebody. I killed someone? Cap somebody, yeah. Um, I've never done that. I got my first 32 when I was 15. I started slanging, selling drugs, doing my shit. And I even had a failed rap career. This city's tough. It runs on drugs, blood, liquor, honey, guns, bullets, crack, dope, fent, rock, heroin. Okay. The rules are overly complicated as per usual. It's Bloods versus Crips, Chris and Letty versus Josie, Vance, and Sylvia. By the way, 
Lance is gone again. Territory is split between the upstairs for the Bloods, Letty and Chris, and the downstairs for the Crips. They need to G-check someone if they step on yo turf, and if you don't, you lose one respect point. Man, Josie, what the fuck? If I just tear your shit up and not turn anything into a hat? What the fuck is this lesbian-ass dicky shirt you got on with this fucking dog tag on? You ain't never had a dog tag. You ain't never run war. Get your dirty-ass Adidas slippers on these fucking cyberpunk-ass, anime-ass, bullshit-ass fucking joggers on you got running. The fuck you got going on? And you copying Sylvia's makeup. Guess what? She wear it first, she wear it better. Get your mark ass on and wash that shit off. That's how you G check somebody. They each get gang names, they're not allowed to dead name, or they lose one respect point. You are no longer letting. Your new name is L Word. L Word. L Word, what's good with you your girl? I don't want to hear none of that Josie shit no more. Your new name is Jose. <laughs> Vance, the OG homie. Your new name will be Pill. What's up, Pill? What's good with you? Silver, your new name in this hood is going to be Pepper. Chris, your new name in the streets, everybody's going to call you Fat. The most memeable moments that get clipped and shared on Twitter will win the challenge by getting more points, and it's double points if the N-word is said within that clip. Chris puts points on the board pretty quickly. Now here's the thing. Can we get some Double points. Immediately, everyone starts acting like they're inside of a McDonald's in Oakland, California. Hey! There's also the elimination element, which is yet to be explained, which a stereotypically late Mr. G rolls in and explains further. I heard y'all some gang bangers and shit. Y'all out here thugging. You heard right, Mr. G. You better not talk to me like that, bitch. Mr. G is essentially a teacher, and all the fish are high school students. They need to carry around comically heavy backpacks, which are, I'm assuming, filled with bricks. And I bought y'all some books. And they're going to need to take the PSATs. There's two books to study from. Each group can only get one of these books. Check it out, pimps. One of these books has a 2.2 star rating on Amazon. Translation, you don't want to be studying that shit. It will fuck you up. The other book, not saying it's this one. I did look at it reflexively, but it's not this one. Has a five star rating on Amazon. And is widely known as the source of PSAT prep that you need to be getting your ass studying. You heard? I heard. You heard, huh? I heard. All right. Whoever gets the lowest score will be leaving the tank, and whoever gets the highest score will be getting more fish bucks. Day 29. The broke fish tank arc continues with Gold Striker pulling Josie aside and asking her if she'd be willing to take less prize money. I think you're probably gonna win the thing because you're like more popular than everybody else by like seventy percent. Uh, how how pissed would you be if the grand prize was like twelve thousand dollars? <laughs> I mean, less than expected, but more than I expected when I came here. So. I didn't mention this when it happened the night prior on day 28, but uh, Jet pulls Letty and Josie aside and makes them do like fake ad reads. I thought it was a one-off bit, so I didn't include it. The idea behind the ad reads is that they have to start generating more revenue because they in fact are broke. Base Boss Audio Empire is a high fidelity, no, wait, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's an all American business. You don't listen to me when I talk to you. I am you never so on day 29, they try the same thing with Vance this time. Gold Striker also makes an appearance as well to give Vance some acting notes, which is hilarious. Ever since liking CBD, I'm living a new clarity. I'm wide awake and I'm ready for what lies ahead. <laughs> ever since Viking CBD. I mean, is there a problem with. <laughs> you guys are saying, ever since Viking CBD, that's like saying, ever since Nabisco cookies. I'm feeling bright and shiny. I mean, no, like it's, you say ever since a brand. Yeah, fair. That doesn't make sense. Um, 
Ever, ever since I got my hands on Viking CBD. Ever since I got my hands on Viking CBD, I'm living in new clarity. I'm wide awake and I'm ready for what lies ahead. That's beautiful. Obviously, this whole thing is a gaslighting campaign. We also get Gold Striker gaslighting Chris into... Well, making him admit that he has a thing for Letty and then basically goading him into thinking that he has a chance with Letty. You actually have a thing for her, shit, or are you playing? Mm -hmm. A little bit of a thing. A little bit of a thing? A little thing wrong, you know? Homie, I think he needs to amp it up and shit. He then gaslights Letty into, <laughs> I guess, letting Chris have sex with her for a fish buck. I guess that was the implication. Yeah, you have to. He's, he's in love with you. It would be mean not to. You gotta do it. Not, I'm not like into him. I don't care. Do what I tell you to. Just do it, okay? Just do it. Three, two, one, sleep. <laughs> In the afternoon, they drop the whole gang war thing and add a breakfast club style to the challenge. But that gets dropped pretty quickly as well as we get introduced to our special celebrity guest, a yelling Puerto Rican man. Honestly, I actually don't know who this is. If you know, let me know in the comments. I tried to look on Twitter, but as of me recording this, I have no idea who it is. He yells at them and tells them to go back to gang banking, forcing them to cook crack, and then just kind of leaves. Are you fucking, are you sniffing the fucking product? What the fuck? You got that fucking razor on your fucking nose. I don't know. It kind of just seemed like it didn't really lead to anything. Because directly after that, everyone drops the gangsta motif and just becomes normal and has to watch Chris do stand-up for half an hour. God damn, that's a good choice, Sylvia. That's a good one. And a lot of friendships create a bunch of new ones, right? And just when it looks like we're about to get to the end of a somewhat slow day, we get the reintroduction of Morrow, but this time as a freeloader. And we also get the introduction of a new freeloader, the debut of Betty. Guys, Jews, I want to introduce you to our new friend, our fellow freeloader, Betty. <laughs> Jet announces we have officially entered Act 3. TTS will be cheaper moving forward. Let's go! Day 30. Day 30 is fairly uneventful. During the night, Chris decides to show off his airsoft fatty and creeps out Josie, who runs to her room crying. I'm breaking the fucking fish head today! This is probably the first time we've ever seen Josie actually affected by anything. So TTS and chat have like a targeted harassment campaign and try to dogpile her moment of weakness. Vance and Morrow leave the tank to film a sketch for World Peace season two. Letty rejects Chris's advances, so he turns on her and there was a new rule put in place that Letty and Betty can't be on the same floor at the same time because it's just so confusing to the fans. Chris gets a makeover. Also, it seems like Team Josie has lost their book, so they ended up stealing Team Letty's, which is just Letty at this point. Letty wants her book back, Sylvia plays dumb, so Letty goes on a sedated Frank Hassel style rampage in her room. But maybe you'd... You gotta spit on it. That's what Frank taught me. You gotta spit on everything. This leads to another blow up argument between the two. Do I have the Sylvia book? Smelly, you Sylvia know where it smelly, is. Sylvia oh, Smelly. Oh wow. Sylvia Smelly. Sylvia Smelly. My shit? Yeah. Are you you shit in my closet on my forehead? Somebody pays for a shark attack on Sylvia and they dump, I think it was like cream of chicken on her or something. But as she was cleaning up, chat went crazy when she brought out the milkers. Day 31. Chat keeps messing with Chris. They're playing the yelling Asian man on basically every speaker that's within earshot of him. This activates his schizophrenia. And he thinks the speakers are being haunted by a ghost named Steve. Well, guess what? I think it's the fucking ghost here. Fucking with me, dude. He can't find his bag and has another mental breakdown getting naked and putting new John holes in the wall. We get the drunken piece of shit challenge part two 
Day Drunk Edition, Betty wins by showing off her tits in the least sexy way humanly possible. She then starts dumping condiments on Letty, who returns the favor. She then says some real mean things about her past. Yeah, I don't sell my nudes. If I was in a relationship with a psycho, and that psycho posted my nudes on the internet, that's not my Fault. Betty then dumps mustard in her suitcase and all over the room and gets put in the drunk tank. I gotta take you to the drunk tank. Oh, oh shit. Oh, sorry. Sorry. We then get somehow our only second elimination challenge in the entire fish tank history. Wild, I know. It was originally supposed to be the, the PSAT challenge, the PSAT challenge, but that got changed into like the test taking challenge because now there's going to be three tests the PSATs, as well as a physical exam, and the Gold Striker trivia exam. But in classic Gold Striker fashion, they have to take all three tests at the exact same time. Gold Striker question number eight. What pivotal life event? Do you remember where you put it? Uh, no. Okay. Made Mr. Gold Striker stop practicing Judaism and change his name from Goldstein to Gold Striker. Gold Striker physical challenge time. Mini physical challenge. Just Benny and Letty. Oh. He also has a megaphone. Werewolves can't stand this sound. If you're covering your ears right now, you're a werewolf. To a vampire hunter like me, this sound is comforting. But it's torture. For liking the light. Is this thing busted or is it out of batteries? It's Chinese and it's bad, I think. And TTS does get enabled. Five, nine, one, two, eight, seven, four, two, one, four, six, eight, <laughs> I get seven, it. Uh, four, two, nine, six, two, seven, oh, one, three, six, <laughs> This was Guantanamo Bay levels of torture. Gold Striker tallies up the points and Sylvia is eliminated. Honestly, she got the most shit out of anyone in the house. I mean, TTS was so brutal to her, just so goddamn mean. But even though she did freak out multiple times, like more than I can count, she stuck in there and never gave up. She truly was a, a warrior. You beat out some freeloaders, but unfortunately you had the lowest of the fish. <clears throat> and um, I think we all have grown very fond of you. And the production staff, we really like you a lot. We think you're a really great girl. And um, you did a good job entertaining people, but it's, it's time to go. You did, you did a really good job. Thanks for being here. Thank you for doing this. You did good. All right, so everybody, please give Sylvia a round of applause. Her name was Sylvia. And with only three fish remaining and Frank Hassel a distant memory, we get a new freeloader meter, Alex Stein. 60 percent look at your mouth dude look at all that gross stuff in your mouth dude it's disgusting are you yeah, so, okay so there's look at all is that, that all stuff. you have to do is that you all, you have all that nasty stuff in your mouth you look disgusting day 32 Morrow gets revenge on Betty on behalf of Letty. Betty seems upset by this and is pulled downstairs and the producers gather her luggage. Perhaps she could dish it and not take it or perhaps she sobered up and realized she showed her titties online. Either way Betty is officially gone. A new shark gets introduced. I'm pretty sure this is YouTuber uh, Turkey Tom or, or Tom Dark. He definitely was in the house and I think he did make an appearance outside of the shark costume. He's also friends with Jet, so that's kind of a relationship there. My best guess is the mysterious new shark was him. Uh, I, would, I would give his content a follow. I'm, uh, I'm a fan. Josie finds Chip sleeping in a pile of garbage. Vince, come quick. What? You don't see PR, I did it on Chris. Hurry, with the surface. Oh, shit. Hey, shit. Chip? Chip? Yeah, Is that Chip? He stays the night, but leaves at some point because he was blackout drunk. Chris lost his bag and had his 100th mental breakdown. <laughs> Maro and Chris seem to have been at odds all day. They have a heated exchange by the bathroom upstairs. My first day with Maria. Oh, 
fucking shut up because I'm fucking real and I'll say shit to your face every fucking time. Day 33. Chip almost dies. Chris has officially requested to leave the tank. On his way out as some kind of peace offering, Maro and Chris agree to slap each other. Maro definitely takes advantage of this and slaps the shit out of Chris. As the Alex Stein meter quickly reached 100%, Alex Stein and Don Terrius, his wife's boyfriend, have been added as the newest freeloaders. Hey guys, my I notice that nobody here has a mask on. Uh, do you guys mind putting on a mask for the duration of the show? We Well, we can make masks. Are you vaccinated for COVID-19? Alex, could you introduce your relationship with Don Terrius, how you guys know each other? Because you guys, you guys are pretty tight. Uh, this is Don Terrius, and the reason he doesn't have a mask uh, on is he's vaccinated and boosted. This is my wife's yeah, boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex Stein, if you don't know, he's like a like a right wing troll. I would say like kind of like in the lane of Frank Castle, just toned down, obviously. He did the AOC Big Booty Latina bit, if you're familiar with that. AOC, my favorite Big Booty Latina. I love you, AOC. You're my favorite. She wants to kill babies, but she's still beautiful. Chris returns because it turns out he was just filming World Peace 2. <laughs> During his return, Letty took a hit off his CBD joint. This leads to Letty now being under investigation for breaking the first rule, no weed. Letty, let's get a trip report. Trip report, CBD trip report. How high are you on a scale of one to 100? Zero. Slime. What do you think, how high is she? At least 99.9. Frank Hassel returns with the sole goal of making Maro leave after seeing what he did to Chris. Within 15 minutes of Frank returning, he kicks the door open on Maro taking a shit and then Maro just cries and leaves. I, is it occupied? Like the yeah, I know. What's going on? I was fucking uh, like, beta, bud. You forgave him already? Right? <laughs> <laughs> and then he like bitch slapped you. It was like violent and mean. It was like it was like daily tent, right? What happened up there? I'm gonna be a bit. What's happening? Tomorrow. You're leaving? Tomorrow. You're bitching out already? He's going home! She opened the fucking door when I was taking a shit. He fucking threw something and hit me in the head. As he's leaving, Frank tells him, no, you're not allowed to, and just grabs his luggage and starts throwing it around the house, just showing him how little control he has over the situation. He ended up just running downstairs and kind of crying and leaving. R.I.P. Morrow. YouTuber Brandon Buckingham and a fat black hooker named Soraya swing by. They brought in the hooker for Chris to get him some pussy. They go upstairs to bedroom four. She starts massaging Chris and then finds a poo stain on his shorts and on the bed. Honestly... I'm scared to lay down on my own life because I feel like the bed is kind of dirty. I'm scared to lay down on that bed. And honestly, I'm so sorry, but when I was like massaging you, there's something on like yeah, your the butt crack. Yeah, it's the old stage fucking hair softening. What's Slide. that? Old stage hair softening, sliding dirt. Okay, I'm like, it looks like poop stains. I got scared. You're good. Okay, well, I definitely need some more money now because, um, you know. Chris locks himself in the bathroom after the shame and embarrassment he was put through. Day 34. Vance shaves his head, Josie shaves her eyebrows. Frank manages to get him to come downstairs and get some a haircut too. Oh, Jesus Christ! Frank and Brandon leave for the night. It's honestly hard to condense just how fun and crazy this night was. Like, th there's no way I could all, there's too many things to like package into like a digestible little two minute section. Like the balancing act of, of Frank Hassel's chaotic energy and, and Alex Stein's um, counterbalance of like goofiness that gets brought into the mix and all the little like, you know, the fat black hooker, all the bits that they were doing and everything. It was like hands down, 
the most fun I've had watching Shark Tank in one night. I felt like Josie, like I was like sensory overload. I didn't, there were so many things going on in different rooms. Like I didn't know where to look even. Brandon returns in the afternoon for the vegan cooking challenge. Chris vomits milk on Letty, so she dunks his clothes in the toilet. Everyone better get an umbrella. So No, she didn't. No, yeah, she hit the fucking bathroom bitch. I didn't know this on your desk. What's happening? They're all fucking bad. Josie, come XLA, and Josie should be fine. It's also worth noting that the night prior, Frank Hassel dumped, well, multiple beverages on Letty and then just a cup of toilet water. Uh, this, <laughs> this led to a, a toilet ceasefire, uh, as far as anyone is concerned toilet or contents within the toilet or the water in the said toilet are all off limits uh, for the time being. I mean, come on, literally 24 hours ago, I stepped in because toilet water was too far. I didn't like the toilet didn't water. I didn't throw it at him. It's, it's more psychological because it's on his clothes. Does threw up on me. Is that allowed? Is that allowed? Throwing up milk? That's fucked up. I'm not being treated like a human here. Yeah. Like, that is inhuman. Like, that's fucking disgusting. Spitting milk on people? Yes. Okay. Um, chat, weigh in. What's worse? Toilet water play? Toilet play? No, but I didn't throw- This sends Chris into, like, this violent rage, and <laughs> I think it leads to, like, probably the most memeable moment in the show's history where Chris falls up the stairs extremely slowly, but hits super hard. <laughs> is now only more angry at Letty, so Jet has to specify that you can't dunk things in toilets either. Not, the water is not allowed to leave the toilet. It's okay this time. Mm -hmm. No more toilet. What? No okay. more toilet. No more toilet. No more toilet. No more toilet. Letty? Letty? No more toilet. No more toilet, Letty. But tell him not to fucking throw up on me, spit on me, or throw dildos at me. Before leaving, Brandon teaches the tank how to wrestle. Oh, get out of there, baby! Get out of there! Look for your wife, baby! And at night, Alex wants to raise the entity in a seance in the garage. He makes Josie paint a pentagram. Her commentary is hilarious. It is it's still wrong. I feel like I shouldn't be doing this. I feel like he's baiting me. I feel like I shouldn't be doing this. It's still wrong. I don't want to draw this. I don't want to draw this. It's still wrong. It's still satanic. I'm not satanic, I don't want to draw this, this is weird. Day 35. They managed to summon the entity and eject its spirit from the tank. To clear your name. Clear your name. Dontarius and Alex are kicked out of the tank after Dontarius is caught smoking crack. No. No. Dude, you cannot. Yes. You gotta go. You cannot smoke. You cannot smoke crack in your mouth. Come on. It's, it's just a little bit, man. Oh, man. Oh, what the fuck? Why didn't you tell me he smokes crack? You're gonna I didn't know. I thought he was clean. I told you to be clean when you came back to his house. Oh, 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 oh. Nice. I'm oh, going. You're kicking him out. I'm fucking going with him. I'm not fucking staying here with my wife's house. boyfriend. Yeah. What, Jet? I don't think it's fucking right. Dude, Lenny smells fucking cigarettes. I started doing coke. 
Tonight's the one. Yes, you do, you old. Oh, my God, you were talking about you wanted to smoke a cigarette with a little coke in it. That's what you said. Why? Why do you care? Oh, do you care that Don Terry's is smoking crack? You shouldn't because you're a cokehead. I didn't say anything about Don Terry's smoking crack, so why are you singling me out? I didn't shoot God. You're killing me right now. Fuck off. Did you actually do crack? Have you been no, smoking coke? No, I haven't, like, smoked cigarettes or done coke in here. I mean, I didn't smoke, like, half a cigarette. All right. Okay, so you did That has nothing to do with the problem at hand, Alex. And with only three fish remaining, plus Chris, we have to move in to our next elimination challenge. Gold Striker arrives and starts the fan favorite walking challenge. Now this isn't the elimination challenge, but whoever wins this will have immunity from the elimination challenge. Basically the challenge is that they just have to keep moving, something that probably sounded like a fun bit on paper, but it just ended up with like nine hours of people walking. Chris and Letty get taped together, so do Josie and Vance. Letty is forced to watch Chris take a poop. <laughs> Letty is DQ'd pretty early. You're out. What do you mean out? You're not long, you're fucking standing there. Surprise. Out of nowhere, John makes his return to the tank. And I may have. Oh, oh my god! god! Hey, what are you doing? How are you? I heard a lot about you. I heard a lot about you too. Really? Where? Boring as the walking challenge had become, it did eventually come to an end. Josie was victorious. Ugh. Day 36, the final. On our abruptly final day, we get, I don't know, a fairly relaxing day, a lot of hangouts. Jason Goldstriker comes by for a large period of time. He does a lot of workouts with people. There are some fights, though, including this one. Hey, what the fuck? Thanks a lot. I got no clean clothes now. Now you know how I feel. Nice job playing with my pads. <laughs> And then Jet and Gold Striker gather everyone in the living room and let them know that essentially that the show, the show is out of money. So the contractor that came by the house today uh, said that we did, that we did uh, <laughs> $60,000 of damage to this place, which I don't, I don't understand how that's possible, but I guess they don't make this type of cupboard anymore, so they have to do the whole thing. Um, and then this floor is, it's not just cosmetic, apparently. Uh, and then I added to that in the garage today. I don't know if you can saw that. I don't, it, I absolutely don't want, we don't want this to be the type of thing where you guys are waiting 90 days for your fish bucks or whatever. Um, but the broader point here is that the costs of this project are kind of overrunning the money that it's bringing in. So what we're deciding to do is we're going to close it out early. The uh, final elimination is just going to be we're, we're going to deliberate on um, we're going to go downstairs, we're going to deliberate, we're going to choose who was the most entertaining. We are solvent enough to pay the rest of you guys your fish bucks that you got. Um, and um, that's about it. It comes down to a financial thing. They go into the basement and deliberate as to who should be the victor. The fish go up to their respective rooms to pack and have one more chat with TTS. Letty reveals to Chris that it was her that hit his bag and clothes this whole time. You In case if you're unfamiliar, a hundred dollars for a Yu-Gi-Oh deck, like that's not that that's not that much. I mean, it's not like some meta-breaking thing. It's just, it's a that's a pretty low tier Z tier deck. Can't believe the show was pushed over the edge by the goddamn walking challenge. Right after I bought this suit for like five minutes, this is BS. Thirty-five thousand. We feel that they are uh, the most resilient, the most impressive. 
competitor, the most hungry for it, um, the most deserving of it, that person is Lenny. Are you serious? We're serious. Okay. Congratulations, Lenny. Thank you. Good job. Oh my God. Thank you. So much. Well done. Oh my God. Again, congratulations, Letty, for uh, winning fish tank. Right, that's it. Yeah, good job. Good job. Day 36. They actually got me. They actually, they actually, I turn, I turned the show off like, okay, well the cameras are down. So uh, I guess the show actually is over. I should probably speed run the uh, final episode video just to find out that no, it's, it was all, it was all a lie. Gaslit once again. Thanks. Well, in the lore of the show, Dr. Disrespect uh, purchased 51% of the the company that owns the show fish tank and he is now the owner it actually the deal went through a couple days ago so some of you guys we know that we were in talks with an investor he hit us up he wanted 51 percent of the company which is kind of excessive there are pros and cons to this 51 percent of the company means that he has voting rights controlling shares you know he gets to say what happens i'm surprised that you guys didn't recognize him when he came up earlier. Dr. Disrespect. The Doc! Round of applause for the Doc, guys. Round of applause. The guy with a mustache. I call him Dr. Disrespect. You know Dr. Thank Disrespect you is? No. for saving our asses here. No. So he now owns 51% of Fish Tank, and we're back on. Pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. Pretty awesome, huh? Thank you for the $20 donation. Hey, Doctor, thank you for thinking of the fish. Anytime, Jack. Thank you for the 20. I don't know what that whole uh, fish thing is. I feel bad for Letty. That's such a, that is such a shitty thing to do to someone. Well, at least I got a little more use out of the suit. Day 37. Now under new management, we get a bunch of mini challenges throughout the day. We get the bed challenge where everyone has to stay on Chris's bed and last to leave wins. Chris pisses the bed three times. You don't want to sit over here, that's all I want to say. Yep. <laughs> Very beautiful. Yeah. Yep. Initially, the rules were that you could leave to pee, something that Chris obviously didn't follow. If you're doing anything, it has to happen this bed. But we're allowed to go to the washroom, uh, get water, and uh, like grab things? Yeah, you can grab things. You, you can go, you can uh, prepare a meal. Go for it, but you can't eat it unless you're sitting on the bed. So Letty leaves to piss, and Vance wins because basically they just changed the rules for no reason. You guys said that we could use the bathrooms. Yeah, we, we uh, lied to you. And then we get the grossest thing in the house challenge, where essentially they play show and tell with something gross that's currently in the house. <laughs> this was completely insane. Vance presents a moldy piece of queso Chris had made 15 days earlier. John presented Letty. Fair enough. Letty presented one of Josie's plushies that had been shoved into a poo-filled toilet. Josie had presented Chris's triple piss mattress, and Chris wins the game by dumping a cup of diarrhea on his hand. Like, it's, it's liquid diarrhea, so there's only small chunks here. And then we move into our final elimination challenge, Vance versus Letty, since Josie won immunity. This will be a best two out of three style challenge and the first game we get to determine who is going home and going to be in the final two, it is. The Breeding Chris challenge we get, we'll just go. The first part of the challenge will be being Chris's slave. The slave master challenge. Chris is the slave master, best slave wins. Day 38. They clean. Chris makes Letty shave her armpit hair. RIP, the biggest elimination of the show. At some point in the previous night, Letty found John's Bible in the washing machine and the producers told her to turn it on. Hey, your, uh, your laundry's done. Letty opens the washer only to find the remains of what was once a Bible. Go on. It's over for me. It is so fucking over for me. So she runs another cycle. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 
John finds it and goes full autism rage. At this point, the Bible is literally just a pile of gray goop. He cannot be contained until he literally contains himself by barricading himself underneath the stairs in the garage. John, this is absurd. I, I can't talk to you in a, I, we cannot speak in a crawl space. The washing machine is broken. Fucking washer's room. God fucking damn it. That's gonna come out of my it's, face. It's, there's no fixing that. Nothing will bring out John until the producers barter with him and allow him to destroy one of Letty's items as restitution. He instantly goes for literally the only item he could not destroy, her passport. You can't do it! Jason breaks character and legitimately gets very angry. You guys did anything? Alright, let's go in the basement. And once again, the stress of the situation proves too much for John to handle. And John, for a second time, is gone from the fish tank. I wish you could uh, sleep comfortably tonight. Please stay, John. Letty gives Chris an oil massage and feeds him yogurt. Vance does the foot job, I mean rub. Letty does her interpretation of an exotic dance. And finally, the two of them give Chris a sponge bath. Letty wins, which kicks off phase two of the elimination, which is the biggest menace challenge. It's self-explanatory, but if Vance loses this one, that means Letty is up two to zero and Vance is going home. Letty instantly goes goblin mode and tears through the house like, uh, well, like Letty actually. Here, you look like shit now. After another late night and some much needed rest, Vance, playing from behind, tries to make a comeback. He gets fake mad at Josie, who locks herself in the closet and fake cries. No one was really buying it. But in a Hail Mary last ditch effort, Vance steals Letty's glasses and bashes them with a plastic baseball bat. Ooh, boom, another dagger. A little batting practice here. Unfortunately, Vance is just not evil enough to outplay Letty, and Vance is eliminated from the fish tank. You know that whatever you do from here on out, whether it's work a regular job or continue doing, doing comedy, the sky's the limit for you. You're going places, and you have people on your side now. A round of applause for Josh Gibson. Big one, big one for Vance. Come on. Let's go! Also, Goldstriker addresses the rumors that he has a crush on Letty. Letty, um, I love screaming at you and screaming in your face. When I'm done shooting here, I punch the steering wheel in my car for 10 minutes outside because I know that if I go drive and I think about, I, no, stop smiling. I know if I go drive and I think about you and pe people think I have a crush on her, if, I, if, I, if I'm driving home and I'm thinking about her, I'll get a f accident. I'll hit, I'll, I'll hit a family van head on. I call you floor pig. Because when I go home and I think about the show, the only thing that makes me happy is this show's fucking my life up and it's costing a lot of money. It's, it's not, this is not progressing my career. The one thing that makes me happy is knowing that you're here skittering, skittering around on the floor in the dirt and fucking Chris's shit. And that's why I call you Floor Pig. Floor Pigs rise up. Day 39. Gold Striker and the crew pull the two remaining fish into bedroom two to commence the final challenge. They will forever have their essence embossed in glory. Their names will reign in the internet hall of infamy. And long after they're gone, there will be a galactic moment of silence to commemorate the very first individual to conquer the fish tank. This final challenge is known as 
The Cell 2. <laughs> Is there a subtitle for that? What are you thinking? The Final Cell. The Cell 2. Roman numeral 2. For sure. The Cell 2, Roman numeral 2? Yeah. That's the subtitle? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the Cell 2, Roman numeral 2. Four days, one room. Bedroom number two, to be more specific. Each fish will be given two bathroom tokens per day. No showers. A house full of fat guys. There is, however, an additional fat guy who will be appearing. In the total darkness, it will be up to you, using your sense of touch, smell, <laughs> perhaps even taste, to determine if the fat guy that you're dealing with is Chris or an intruder. As the days go on, there will be more and more fat guys in the house. And this is slowly going to become the fat guy house. We haven't had time to do background checks with everyone. But for this round of quick casting, we went to the Crossroads Homeless Shelter in Rhode Island. And we found some people who were really promising. And a series of mini challenges, each worth one point. Last man standing or the first to 48 points will win the fish tank. Obviously, I'm not gonna run through every single challenge, that'd be insane. Uh, so I'm just gonna basically give like highlights of what I found to be kind of uh, interesting or noteworthy over the next four days. We get our first Chris clone, Christian, AKA Chris Chin. It's Chris, that's in my hand. <laughs> I know there was promise of multiple fat guys running around the house, but uh, Chris Chin seemed to be the only one. One of the very first competitions is having to listen to Fatty's dreadful stories and see who can summarize them the best. There's the punch a fat man challenge. Sorry, Fuck. sorry. It's all good. Oh, sweet. Oh, oh my you're god. You're warrior. Stay chill. <laughs> Gold Striker seems to get a little too excited over Jenga. Five, four, three, two, one. Then we get our first and probably only sponsored challenge, the uh, Dr. Disrespect Burger Eating Challenge. So as you know, Doc has partnered with Call of Duty Warzone, Activision's latest game, partnered with this show, has partnered with McDonald's to bring you the Doc Burger. This is, uh, this is not like the Travis Scott Burger, this is not like just some regular McDonald's menu item that's been rebranded. This is a special bespoke food item from McDonald's that the doc has custom tuned, customized. Much like Warzone 2.0's uh, groundbreaking uh, gunsmith uh, feature where you can build your own guns, customize it with attachments, and even tune your attachments to get just the right balance between recoil, uh, aim balance, recoil steadiness. Uh, the doc has custom tuned his own McDonald's burger uh, for everyone to enjoy, only available at McDonald's, the Doc Burger. Thanks, Doc. They play Fat Guy Obstacle Course. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like 50% of these challenges are just to shame and abuse the fat guys in the house. Then there's a tug of war challenge, but more importantly, boys, we finally did it. Josie foot cam confirmed. And hey, Josie, this is, you have to take your socks off. This is not, you're gonna lose. You keep your socks on. Excuse me, I'll, I'll blur it out with the camera. Danny loves you, Fifi. Sorry, the male pricks. And? Yeah, we blurred it out. Christian, you can't look at her feet. All right, are both tuggers ready? We have a giant canvas challenge, AKA the paint a fat guy challenge. The stand still challenge. Josie does surprisingly well with this one. A floor is lava challenge where Josie takes a page out of Letty's devious playbook. They play this weird version of tag that is honestly just so stupid being in a small room with sound effects. Then they go dark mode and play Marco Polo. Hey, I am not gay, but I gotta pay for these Marco, you get some help, bro. In an ode to a fish tank favorite, we get the impersonate John challenge. Vance, 20 push-ups. 
white now. Follow my Instagram, Business Jack 2022. You guys, after this, I'm going to hang out with my best friend, Andrew Tate. Honestly, I think Jet may have won the challenge. He was on Instagram. All right. Vote, vote for the final right. question. This is Jack 22. The final challenge of the day is the act like a monkey challenge. It's not a racial thing. <laughs> After the room is completely destroyed, we close the day out with a very close score of, I already forgot what it is, 15 to Josie and 14 points for Letty. Day 40. After they clean the room and have a mandatory shower, they go right back into the deadliest game. This time, it's a nerf standoff duel. We also get an insult challenge where it's basically who can doctor disrespect the other the most. Josie dresses like Cedric the Entertainer with them. After they finally get some much needed sleep, they do a bunch of like smaller challenges that were kind of just uninteresting. So I'm going to skip ahead time a little bit. Uh, and so currently the score for Letty is 21 to Josie's 20. So it's still a very close race. We also say goodbye to Chris Chin. But we say hello to the newest freeloader, Beans. There's a who can be Beans' BFF challenge. You stopped timing about seven or eight minutes ago. Uh, it's over, yeah. It's like a total Josie news. Then the who can cry first challenge. Letty legitimately breaks down into tears, proving the internet wrong, and she does have a soul confirmed. It's not her fault. What do you want to be? The producers think this may have gone too far. Dude, that was yeah, a little too far. You think so? Probably, yeah. Next is a lung cancer speed run challenge. Gold Striker gaslights Josie into getting the vax. Would you let us vaccinate you for a point? Yeah. You would? Yeah. Why would you do that? I mean, it's a competition. No, it's a deadly poison. Why would you ever let somebody do that to you? Well, and isn't it safe or something? No, it's, it's fucking safe. horrible. No, it's the worst thing. It's fucking poison. It's poison? Yeah, do not get vaccinated. Okay. I'm being serious right now. Then a personal favorite of mine, the Titty Twister Challenge, which I can guarantee I'd be willing to bet money on this, that Airsoft Fatty will be jerking off to this in the future. If milk comes out either side, that's a bonus point. Go. Stop it. She goes right into the twist. She doesn't even like Actually, I lied. This next one was probably my favorite. The uh, uh, TTS is funny challenge. I guess that's what you can call it. Essentially, they enable TTS. The goal is for people to send in TTSs making fun of Josie or making fun of Letty. And then they moderate it so it's like one versus one. So it's not just flooded to one person sort of thing. And then the producers all have water in their mouth. And if something legitimately makes them laugh, they spit it in their face. And essentially, who is the most dry by the end of it is the winner. Who is the cute little boy on the left? Looks like he needs <laughs> Lenny looks like if I let a garbanzo be. <laughs> Vance makes a cameo to judge the drumming challenge. If I was in a band and I needed a drummer that could kind of do their own thing and kind of provide me what they can do, I would choose blue. You going with blue? I'm going with blue. All right, it's blue. 
Thank you, Vance. And the last challenge of the night, a childhood classic, the Chubby Bunny Challenge. If you're unfamiliar, you just, it's basically who can stuff the most marshmallows in their mouth and say Chubby Bunny. Buddy, I don't think you're fitting over or try it anyway, ready? <laughs> Josie, you look like that nerdy chipmunk from Alvin and the Chipmunk. Letty wins, bringing out the score for the night, 27 to 26. Still a very close race. Day 41. In the early AM, we get another actually really good challenge, the Annoy Jason Gold Striker Challenge. Letty wins with the skills she picked up in the Titty Twister Challenge. <laughs> Then is the annoyed jet challenge, which Josie actually takes the W on after she stomps on his foot. They're just massaging you. No. Josie was just massaging my head. Ow! Ow! I don't have shoes on. Ow! They play musical chairs and do limbo. There's a deepest, darkest secret challenge where Letty reveals she likes to scratch and sniff. I like to scratch his balls and then smell it. <laughs> smell the musk. We finally get a lightsaber duel. They do their version of MTV Cribs, which Jet live streamed on his IG, which it was actually pretty funny. Or furniture is destroyed. Uh... Yeah, wave to the camera. We got this taped on here too. Careful. Don't. Uh, salmon head right here. All right, let's oh, go. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's some art on the wall. My hands. Dude, get that away. Don't, <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Can you smell it? Yeah, I can smell it. I can literally smell you from two feet away. Hey, guys. What up? My name is Josie. This is my crib. Here, let me show you around. Come here. Hey, yo, Chris. What's up? We got this. MTV Cribs. MTV Cribs. Oh, my gosh. Don't be scared to be rough. Anyway, sometimes the water is on and off. I, I, I'm... Forgetful, forget to pay the bills, but we got this tub ready. This is their daily ice. Kids love ice cream. Ice cream, you scream. We all scream for ice cream in this house. They come through, people be walking, stumbling in here like this, you know? And they, they're just like, that's why the mirror's off the wall. My boy, my boy Bobby from, from Berkeley, <laughs> he, he, he ripped that right off. I'm always having parties, drinking crazy, Jungle juice. Then we get the fan disavowment challenge where essentially they have to ruin and destroy their fan base before they even have a chance to leave the tank. So there's nothing waiting for them when they get out. That's terrifying. Every t I've taken up learning how to defend myself out of pure terror. Um, I don't know who you are. I will never love you. If I see you on the street, I'd probably make a face because you probably look repulsive. Well, I don't care about the Letty Chuds. I'm actually in a long-term relationship with a trans man. Is that true? That's the Letty Chud assassination. That's a Letty point. I'm sorry, guys. Day 42, the final. As we move into the final day, Josie is at 44 points and Letty is at 40, a pretty sizable gap, but the 48 point system or whatever that was introduced before is like completely thrown out the window at this point. So the finals were gonna be at 7 p.m. EST, so it's just whoever has the most points wins now. Jason pulls a classic gold striker type move and destroys bedroom two for no discernible reason. There we go. And uh, Chris and the wood up there, it was raw. So it was like, this. you know, you didn't care. The bad news is, you're not locked in there for real. We're locked in. We're stuck in this room. What's the good news? The good news is, you're in a fish tank. The house we already show on the internet. What's Do you think I hurt my ankle? Uh, I, yes. You started to brew it. <laughs> there we go, I guess. Okay. We get a chicken fight. 
a spin Chris challenge. <laughs> we finally get a resolution to the Tripping Ben challenge, which uh, was introduced, I think, on the very first first day of the the cell two challenge where it's like if someone can just trip ben out of nowhere they get a they get a point we get the greatest debate in human history usa versus canada while gold striker destroys the room <laughs> apparently letty could have won if she just said the word if you had said a certain word J -J -J -J. you know which one i wanted to hear you might have won the contest but you didn't. You lost your glasses. Sylvia Large. If you're confused, it's Nick. And as the score gets tied up to 50-50, or maybe it was 49-50, whatever it is, we move into our final challenge for the entirety of the fish tank. It all comes down to the mud wrestling challenge. Also, Frank Hassel shows up again. Oh. Hey, Frank. My man. How you doing? With Josie winning the final challenge, this finally brings the score to infinity points versus question mark points. Give her infinity points. Do a sideways eight. Huh? Give Lenny, uh, give Lenny question mark points. Okay. Give, do we ever really know how many points someone truly has? That's the real question. Each and every one of us every day is being judged. Don't worry, guys. I have is being taken in by unknown forces. Who's watching us really tallying the points? We love you, Tally. Question mark? As the production crew comes back in to award the final prize to the winner, we get Jason Goldstriker mentioning that uh, Letty should have won the whole thing, that it was kind of rigged against her. Josie Cells were rigging every single competition in your favor. Anything that had to be, had somewhat of a subjective bias to it. Josie, we had a turn in for Josie Cells right now. There's a poll. Get in there, vote for Josie. I actually don't hate you. I think you probably, I mean, you definitely won this whole thing. But because she smoked weed, if you remember from that. Bloody, let's get a trip report. Trip report, what? Trip report? CBD trip report? She's not. How high are you? On a scale of 1 to 100. Zero. Slime. 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 What do you think? How high is she? How high is she? At least 99.9. And I'm not even going to cancel you for that. I'm not even going to cancel for you that. Actually, you know, I'm going to frame you in the Fish Tank Hall of Fame. But here's the thing. You smoked weed, and the first poster that Jet made in the kitchen is no phones, no weed. She has officially broken the rules and lost the fish tank, and Josie is our winner. Even though she did sign it, he then makes Josie actually read the contract for the first time. Josie, do you know who Sam Hyde is? I do. Okay, do you know I'm a mastermind troll? Is that why you signed up for my game show? and didn't read the contract. The contract is stapled in the lower right corner. Wouldn't that throw you off right away? Read this underlined part for me, okay, if you can. There is no guarantee that the participant will receive any compensation during their time as a participant in the fish tank. Ah! <laughs> Death penalty. Oh, no. Ah! Oh, no. Oops, we got scammed. So, not only can you not talk about what happened here, because our legal lawyer, we're spending the most part of the whole budget on our lawyer, but when we go to do your life story, all the Josie Cells and Letty Chuds, they're going to be watching the My Little Pony derived anime of your life story, produced by Comedy Entertainment. <laughs> Gold Striker then goes off on the viewers. You're both nice people. I don't actually dislike you. I fucking hate you. I hate you. Okay? Because here's the thing. All the production hiccups that we talked about, the show almost getting shut down, half that shit was from you. Half that shit was from you. Trying to shut that. You, you watch the show, but you're trying to get it shut down. Looks like you got what you wanted. You got what you wanted. You finally got it. The show's shut down. Oops! Right before the final contest. Big whoopsie! And the streaming thing, this is not even a thing. If you watch streaming, because I care about my fans. I care about my fans. If you think streaming is a good thing to watch, 
my man, you're watching people pick up pieces of shit and turns off the floor for six weeks, losing sleep. You're in a hospital bed. Fish tank saved my life. I'm in the hospital. Fuck you. You can't. You serious? You're watching people pick their nose for six weeks. You fucking idiots. There's an entire universe of good literature, movies, music for you to enjoy, but you're watching people smearing chocolate ice cream on the wall and, and saying it's the best thing ever. It makes me sick. The Twitter thing, it makes me sick. All the Twitter posts saying how great the show is. Uh, you guys are retarded, and you need to hear that for your own good. And I'm not joking. The streaming's done. That's over. Okay, we've moved on. We're doing big time shit now. World Peace 2 is happening. And the stuff that I am making in World Peace 2 is the old school MDE. Bringing back the old school MDE. The real culture, the real shit is happening right now. And I missed a huge shot today. That's not bullshit. I missed a huge shot today to be here for the finale. You gotta be here for the fish tank finale, Mr. Goldstriker. <sighs> My God. Anyway, that's it, y'all. Uh, Vance Pill, Vance Maxi. Let's go! Nah, MDE never dies. And Jet is left to pick up all the broken pieces after Gold Striker has completely destroyed the spirit of the competition. I'm sorry that you guys let me go through that. Um, let me talk to him. Can I get out to the basement and talk to him? Letty is morally defeated and hides in the closet while Josie obviously seems unbothered. With everyone's spears broken at this point with the rug pull that Jason pulled at the very last minute, we have Jason going back up to bedroom one to essentially play out the plot to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I have one sec for you, Chris, and then I'll kill you. Mr. Wonka, I am extraordinarily busy, sir. Uh, I just wanted to ask about the chocolate. Doing this kind of thing, if I could do your reputation. Chris, my reputation can't go any lower. It can. It can always go lower. She broke the rules! Who? Josie! But how did she break them? Because he broke the rules. What rules? We didn't see any rules, did we, Charlie? Wrong, sir. Wrong. It says right here in plain English. Quinn Quo Pro, ex Rana Publica, Section 9J, 14135. Under Section 37B of the contract signed by him. She gets no fish box, no money, nothing! Etc., etc. Memo bis punitor della cotton. Good day, sir! You lose! Goodbye! So you get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. Just like that, huh? You just like that, then, sir? Is there a point to acting like a child? There is every point to acting like a child, my friend. No. Get out! Out, Chris! Out! Sir, I said good day. In a weary world. Josie! My boy, my beautiful boy! You won! You won the fish tank! You win! Charlie. My boy. You won! You did it! You did it! I knew you would! I just knew you would! The grand prize the fish box! It's all yours! Mr. King! Mr. King, come out, Mr. King! Come in, Mr. Wilkinson. Charlie, meet Mr. Wilkinson. That's not Fred Hassel, Josie. That's Chad King. He works for me. One. Pleasure. Slugworth. No, no, that's not Slugworth. He works for me. Hello, you won the fish tank. Chad. It's nice, it's nice to see you. Nice to see you. You did great. Thank you. You're the winner. Thank you. You won. 
You've won, Josie. You've won the position. You're the winner. There's so much to do, so much to show you. Come now. Don't fall. Everyone gets pulled into the living room for the actual real finale because obviously Sam Hyde had to do like the most Sam Hyde ending possible where everything was just like this giant gaslighting attempt to like get everyone upset, which was successful. And then we get the actual like real ending. Josie gets awarded her prize. Come here, come to the chocolate river where Chris has distributed chocolate on the thing. Lenny, come here, quickly. Josie, that's for you. What? You've won. <laughs> Letty also gets a sizable prize. And Letty, we tortured you so much that we decided we have to pay you the same as a Amazon warehouse worker. Which I've seen a lot of people upset about on Twitter, but I, I think there was no show without Letty, especially in those that final few stages of it. Like she really made the show. So like I, I could see why the producers wanted to give her something special because she brought so much to the show just as a character. I mean, she very clearly found a role in the villain of the show and played it to a T without being like this cartoonish version of it. Like I would say the production team were very lucky to have had her in the show. As Jason is congratulating everyone for how good of a job they did on the show, he actually breaks character and gets pretty emotional. Yeah, it's good. You won. <laughs> Honey. This is legal. When you take this to the bank, they're going to pay Josie from Jason Goldstriker. They'll know what this means. They'll know what this means at the bank. They will. I don't know if it'll fit in the ATM. Josie, you're now America's sweetheart. You're the people's champ. You're who they wanted. But Letty, <laughs> I have to say something. It's going to sound strange. People think that I have a crush on you or something or that I'm we're hooking up or something, but it's uh, obviously I can't bounce bits off of her. They're accusing Jed of the same thing. <laughs> actor to actor, you were fucking so good. Uh, and you knew immediately, like first thing, that we needed a villain to make the show interesting. And I hate when people overact, I can't take it. I want to kill him. But you, here's the thing about that. <clears throat> You know, anybody can go out there and hack someone apart with a machete. But if you're using a scalpel, you have to cut, a, cut around the good tissue, take out the bad. And there's an aspect to certain performing that's like playing chicken with the truth. And um, you did really good. It's just really good. <laughs> and Chris, you too, man. <laughs> Chris, um, we owe you all... Uh, <clears throat> Very proud of you. Thank you. I'll leave it at that. You can fill in the blanks. You know what I would say. This is like the most complex and difficult production ever. <laughs> you did really good, man. <laughs> Thank you. Goddamn. It, <clears throat> it, uh, it was hard, but uh, very much worth it. Thank you for believing in me, always, letting me hold always $250,000, because that's scary. <laughs> always. Ben, you just started working with us, and you got so good so fast, you put in so much work here. You're, you got dog in you, real hard work, man. Everybody knows you're integral with this production, and uh, you killed it. Thank you. And I know you did a lot of work, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, buddy. That's awesome. awesome. Where's Tex? Oh, hey. Yeah, man. Hey, Tex. Thank you for thank you as well. You put in mad hours. Um, you're very professional. Surprising for a young guy. He's 19. That's nuts. They make Josie do one more compliment challenge for the road. Um, I'm bad at saying stuff, so I think I'll stop now, but good job. No, 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 you can't do that. No. Like no. That's actually, you have, you have to say more stuff. Can you, can you try the timer? Pretty easy, kind of. And as the show is over, obviously, Letty still needs to pack. And as everyone has now left the tank, Jet goes into bedroom four to lay down and take in the masterpiece he created. Also, Josie needs to pee. Keep your on. I need to pee. <laughs>